But the teams are out here at Molyneux. Inexplicable offside decisions dominated the first tie. Let's hope football dominates this replay. It's Wolves against Liverpool in the FA Cup. On commentary for TalkSport, former Wolves keeper Matt Murray. And with temperatures dipping below freezing right now, who better to commentate on this one than dancing on ice king Sam Matterface? <laughs> well, let's get our skates on because this huge game for Liverpool is just about to start. And for the first time since the sad passing of Jeff Beck, we've got the opportunity to listen to the Wolverhampton Wanderers fans singing this wonderful football anthem. And Jurgen Klopp might as well have turned up to the press conference with a guitar and a microphone yesterday because he was singing. He could have belted out a Beatles classic. I'll buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. But I don't care too much for money. Money can't buy me love. As the manager was urged to spend his way out of a crisis, he reminded those listening that you can't just do that. You have to have cohesion. You have to have unity. I'm 100% sure, he said, that it is always team spirit first. Liverpool need to find that if they are to get back to where they once belonged. Julian Lepetegui has been working on Team Spirit 2, galvanised by the injustice of Anfield. His team have lost just one 90-minute game since the resumption, and they have confirmed the signing of Spain star Pablo Sarabia in the last few minutes as they continue to try and build their way out of trouble at the bottom of the Premier League. The two teams then ready to get us off and underway with Jose Sarr, the Wolves goalkeeper, just trotting down the other end of the pitch because Wolves are going to shoot from left to right in the first half. Liverpool have turned them around. Lembekisa, Dexter Lembekisa, the Jamaican, is at right back. Nathan Collins, Toti and Johnny are making up a back four, which has been pretty resolute at times over the course of the season. At one stage, they had the best defence in the league. And then Manchester City turned up here. Matinho Hodge and Neves make up the midfield with Aignori on the left and Traore on the right. Raul Jimenez through the centre. Cueven Kelleher is the Liverpool goalkeeper. They're all in red, the outfield players, shooting from right to left. Milner, Gomez, Canate and Simikas are the back four. Navi Keita, Stefan Bajsicic and Thiago are the three-man midfield. And then up top, it's Harvey Elliott and Fabio Carvalho supporting Cody Gakpo in attack we're off and underway live on talk sport tomorrow on thursday we have premier league action for you both the fa cup it is a magical competition that can rekindle seasons and spark form into life both walls and liverpool will hope that some of that magic rubs off on them tonight as they try to save their Uh, Ian Danta here on TalkSport. There's a power cut at Molyneux just as they're getting underway with our commentary of Wolves against Liverpool. We'll be with Sam Matterface and Matt Murray very shortly once they've reconnected, but there has been a power cut at Molyneux. I'm here at the new lawn for the FA Cup tights, not a replay. It's the first chance of Forest Green and Birmingham City to play each other in a competitive fixture. Here at the new lawn and Forest Green are attacking down the left-hand side with Miles Peart harris but it's cleared away by Jordan James for Birmingham up to halfway. But the home side win it back. It's League One against Championship here. We'll also keep you updated with events at the Hawthorns, of course, where West Brom are playing Chesterfield after that 3-3 thriller in the first game. And let's get an update early on from Swansea.com Stadium. Talk Sports Lawrence Mora. Yeah, good evening. Swansea nil, Bristol City nil. Just a couple of minutes on the clock here and a much-changed Swansea team. They've they've come in here with seven changes from the side that faced Sunderland and, uh, and one on Weir side at the weekend uh, with just four players retaining their places. Grimes, Cabango, Latibudier and Pirot, the four. Bristol City unchanged from the team that beat Birmingham. Sorry to remind you of that dance at the weekend. Um, and uh, Nigel Pearson obviously trying to get some consistency in his team, consistency in selection and consistency consistency in performance but with three minutes on the clock here it's Swansea nil Bristol City nil honestly I've been on there 30 seconds and already I'm getting baited by my colleagues nil nil here at the new lawn the underway at Molyneux between Wolves and Liverpool big power cut inside the stadium in the press area but they're reconnecting our talk sport team so we'll be with them very shortly with Sam and with Matt meantime let's check in in the early stages at the DW stadium in the FA Cup replay Matt Jones and three minutes on the clock here is still Wigan nil Luton nil but Luton have started really brightly and they've just had a terrific chance good play by Corley Woodrow who's come into the side today he managed to 
to skip past a couple of tackles and get into the six-yard box from where he lifted a shot over the bar. It did take a deflection and they forced the corner, which Wigan uh, managed to clear. If you did miss the, the team news earlier, it maybe is an indication of how these two sides and managers see this competition in terms of their respective seasons because five changes for Wigan and one of them who drops out is Will Keane, their top scorer uh, for this season. There's uh, no place for Cork and Nyambi, uh, Cousins or McLean either with Dariqua, Watmore, Bennett, Asgard and Fletcher coming in for them. From a Luton point of view, obviously Rob Edwards is fairly new in the job but he still harbours ambitions of getting into that championship playoff area. Uh, no call to Morris for them due to a calf injury. They've also dropped Ruddock, uh, Lockyer and Potts replaced by Woodrow, uh, Reese Burke, Louis Watson and Gabriel Osho. The uh, original game nine or ten days ago ended 1-1. The man who scored the equaliser for Luton in that one, Harry Cornick, is on the bench uh, tonight and I wonder if we'll see him at some point. But four minutes on the clock, Luton had the best chance so far but it remains Wigan nil, Luton nil. Three minutes gone at the new lawn in the FA Cup. Forest Green nil, Birmingham nil. We'll be back to Molyneux as soon as is possible, technically speaking, because of the power cut that's just hit the press box at the get-go of Wolves against Liverpool in that FA Cup replay. But these two teams playing for the first time because a waterlock pitch here at the new lawn ten days ago put paid to the original tie. So they're getting to go at each other for the first time. And Bailey Cargill wants a ball with Swinton diagonal ball into the Birmingham box. But it's onto the chest of Manny Longello on loan from West Ham. Back in the side tonight, one of five changes made by John Eustace. Six made tonight by Ian Birchnell for the home side. One of them is uh, Matty Stevens playing his first start for Forest Green since April of last year. Free kick one by Brandon Cooper. Recent arrival at Forest Green, squares the early free kick left for Bailey Cargill, goes into midfield, and they're trying to work it forward, but Hannibal wins it back for Birmingham, and Jordan Graham, playing on the right-hand side of the five-man Birmingham midfield, works it in field for Jordan James. Longello in a bit of space just over the halfway line. Nil-nil between Forest Green and Birmingham. Wolves-Liverpool also nil-nil. They're underway there, but there's a technical problem at Molyneux we'll be back with our commentary team shortly Hannibal with the ball into the box looking for Jokovic and it's very calmly headed back by Cooper to his keeper Lewis Thomas who's coming in because the uh, the keeper they brought in Doohan at the weekend is ineligible for this tie there's several players who can't play for Forest Green tonight in this tie from their weekend draw at Exeter Josh March giving chase forcing Birmingham to put the ball out of play it was Kevin Long making only his second appearance for Birmingham after his move from Burnley. And it's the same back three that Birmingham had for when they were beaten quite soundly 4-2 at Bristol City at the weekend. Five minutes gone on TalkSport in the FA Cup. Forest Green nil, Birmingham nil. Wolves Liverpool also nil nil. We will be back there, I promise, very shortly. They're just about to get underway as well in the next few minutes at the Hawthorns. West Brom against Chesterfield is an eight o'clock kickoff. Forward come Forest Green, headed away by the edge of the area by Long. Breaks in the edge of the area for Ben Stevenson. Dion Sanderson gets a foot in for Birmingham and clears it away. But Don Bernard strong with a header on halfway. And now Corey O'Keefe moves in from the right flank. Floats a ball into the box. He's dangerous and put behind by Kevin Long for the first corner kick of the game, which has gone the way of Forest Green. Don Bernard did really well on halfway to keep the ball away from two Birmingham shirts worked it to Corey O'Keefe on the right hand side and his swirling cross had to be put behind so Forest Green will have a corner away to our right hand side the Birmingham City fans about 700 of them in the open end opposite to our commentary position and it will be Kyle McAllister to take the corner kick for Forest Green Forest Green in there lurid green tiger stripe kit Birmingham in all blue shirts and shorts with white socks McAllister with a left footed delivery to come Etheridge waits on his line it's actually played short to the right hand corner of the box and O'Keefe who gives it back to McAllister works the angle swings it in from the right hand corner of the box it's headed over the bar for a, another corner kick it came off a Birmingham head last of all says our referee Sam Allison so in these early stages Forest Green asking a few questions of the side from a division above Birmingham went out of the FA Cup last year to Plymouth Argyle at this stage of the competition. And then another short corner to O'Keefe, right-hand corner of the box. He works it in field to Ben Stevenson. Goes further across. Chance for a shot, maybe. It's a brilliant goal! Oh, what a goal, Ben Stevenson! Got the ball onto his right foot, 25 yards out, and curled it into the postage stamp. 
past Neil Etheridge. Seven minutes gone, and the League One side lead. Ben Stevenson with a magic right foot shot that had Neil Etheridge beaten all ends up. They were pressuring from two corners, and Ben Stevenson has got the League One side ahead, and the shock is on in the FA Cup. Beautiful hit. Let's get back to Molyneux because they've managed to reconnect. So as we leave here with Forest Green leading by Galton Hill, back to Sam Matterface and Matt Murray. Thanks, Dan. Yes, welcome back to Molyneux where it is Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Liverpool nil in the FA Cup third round replay here. Liverpool coming forward down the left-hand side. We were interrupted in our broadcast because of a huge power surge inside Molyneux just minutes after kickoff. It took all the lights out in the stadium everybody's broadcast equipment went off the ones that were being powered by the stadium itself i don't know what happened on the television even the var set is now being reset down in front of us as a result of that we lost power for at least sort of five minutes or so i, I mean i don't know how long we've been playing in the game now i was using my phone to broadcast on twitter <laughs> during the course of that delay nine minutes and 55 seconds i mean for eight minutes we had no power as a result of that and um, and in the meantime not much has happened but it did sort of disorientate everyone inside the stadium I think oh, it was crazy and uh, the referee though he got the game going again quickly I thought Wolf started really well got the ball out to Raul uh, sorry to uh, Dharma Traore a good few times he put some dangerous crosses in header just wide from Raul Jimenez um, Liverpool have been selective with when they press but I think they've upped their tempo and got after Wolves a little bit more and won the ball back uh, one little heart in mouth moment for Jose Sao when he spilt that cross but recovered but all in all, it's, um, you know, you sometimes when there have been so many changes from sides, you can expect it to be a little bit of a slow tempo, but it's good as well. I, I can see why Matino, you, you asked me before on the Twitter, so many youngsters in as well, then Matino's there as well, just to help the likes of Dexter and Hodge and just, just see them through it. But crowd are in good voice as well, so good atmosphere. You're listening to Talk Sport, it's Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Liverpool nil, and the ball is out on the halfway line, and it's a Liverpool throw which is going to be... Uh, taken by Kostas Simakas. Jurgen Klopp is standing there in his technical area, all in black with a big black jacket on and a huge hat on tonight to keep himself warm. It's freezing temperatures here in uh, the black country and the ball is tossed down the, the touchline by Simakas into the feet of uh, Cody Gakpo. He's trying to manipulate his way past Nathan Collins. The big tall Irishman pokes it clear but only as far as Cater who's 10 yards outside the box. Dead centre is Elliot, who clips it into the air, Fabio Carvalho runs towards the touchline, doesn't quite get hold of it, tries to steer it back in field, Cody Gakpo then tries to square it, gives it away cheaply, and then Matinho, who's escaping, looked to be fouled by Thiago, Andre Mariner, who is the referee, has allowed play on, ball slipped to the edge of the area by Milner, interrupted by Neves, Neves then pounces and gets the ball forward, up into the midway point of the Wolves half, and then it's helped on, down the left for eight, Nori from Jimenez, and he's charging through, into the area, he gets onto his right foot, tries to strike, hits the back of the defender, there's claims for handball. They're looking at the referee who shakes his head. Yulan Lepetegui is claiming the same on the touchline. Well, sure. Hopefully the VAR's back up and running then and they can look at it <laughs> and uh, even things up. But a uh, good break from Wolves. But a uh, good block in the end. Yeah, well, that's Liverpool's Achilles heel, isn't it? Getting broken on like that. We mentioned it earlier. Here's Elliot in towards the edge of the area. He shoots over the top of the goalkeeper from 20 yards. And Jose Sarr lost the flight of the ball. And it snuck over his head and into the net. And Harvey Elliott runs over towards those Liverpool supporters who are in the bottom tier of the stand opposite us who are going balmy because they've gone in front inside quarter of an hour away at Molyneux. Liverpool lead, Harvey Elliott with his fourth goal of the season. Wow, crazy. Liverpool uh, say Wolves on the break and then Wolves got recounted and then Liverpool straight down the other end and it's interesting to see because you know I've been a big fan of Jose Sarr but he's quite high off his line but just the trajectory of the ball I don't know if it took a little nick the way it sort of seemed to loop over and I'm just looking at Lopetegui now he's saying you need to look and check the uh, eight Nori shot that was blocked there's a handball there maybe they wanted a penalty I don't think they're going to get it it wasn't a clear obvious uh, mistake but yeah it's just crazy suddenly the game came to life got stretched but I'd just like to see it back because it wasn't right in the corner. He sort of went over Jose Sarr. And, um, but it looked like he maybe took a little nick. But I remember doing a game here when Liverpool youth played. Harvey Elliott scored a wonder goal at that end from a volley in a Champions League sort of youth game. But great finish from the young man. Game on and a really, really good goal for Liverpool. Last goal was in the Champions League against Ajax. And he's put Liverpool in front tonight at Molyneux with a super finish. 
a really good goal from the edge of the penalty area an opportunist an opportunist strike from the edge of the box which went over the top of Jose Sarr and into the net 14 minutes played Wolves nil Liverpool won the first game between these two was keenly fought despite a number of changes for both teams Wolves largely outplayed them in all honesty but they feel hard done by by the result at Anfield after having their winner incorrectly ruled out and another VAR call Julian Lepeckegi thinks has gone against his team yeah, he wants a handball, but you still got to be, you know, keep it tight at the back, play on. But I still want to see it because it just didn't seem right how that went in. You know, where it wasn't right in the corner. It was a long way out. I think Jose Sarr's a bit high off his line, but I just don't know if it took a nick. Simicast coming forward down the left-hand side, running at Lembekisa. He's played it on towards the left edge of the area. Back in field it goes. It's collected now by Fabio Cavallio, then Tiago. Tiago wide to Simicast once again. Traore coming back to help defend. Lembekisa getting stuck in on Simicas. Cater keeping it moving in midfield. Vicetic out towards the far side. Collected now by Milner. And Liverpool keeping possession, ticking over at a rapid pace. It's a lot more intense from Liverpool than we've seen in recent performances. Even though it's a much changed team. They've made eight changes tonight, Liverpool, from the side that were beaten by Brighton. And it was a dreadful performance on Saturday. And even Jurgen Klopp himself suggesting that it was the worst performance that he'd ever been involved in as a manager. And they have failed to win their last three matches across huge, all competitions. They've got a huge game on Saturday against Chelsea. Yeah, a massive game in there. That run of form is why Wolves would have wanted to start so well if they could have got the first goal. Because even though you say it's a lot of changes, it's still the same lads in the squad and it would have goals just hurt you if you go behind. But now it's a Liverpool fans in voice. Um, but they'll be looking to build on this. Harvey Elliott skirting down the right touch line. In field it goes to Tiago. Then Cody Gakpo is just short of the edge of the D. Plays it wide to the left. Carvalho out wide to Simicast who blasts the ball towards goal. And he manages to almost get that on target from a tight uh, angle it just goes narrowly over the top of the crossbar but I think he should have scored he's got to hit the target and in that position so as a goalkeeper you just want to get in line and stand Simicas with his ability and that sweet left foot and the way the ball was just laid into him to say go on hit me first time I think he's got the ability to get over that kiss the grass hard and low hit the floor he scores and makes it a lot more difficult but he's got underneath it and sails over the bar so minimum he should be working Jose Sarr from there very very good chance for Liverpool to double their lead Wolves nil Liverpool won on a interrupted talk sport broadcast tonight live from Molyneux where we've had a, a complete power outage for uh, a few minutes here at Molyneux in which all of the uh, the power sockets up here in the press box went out we were uh, I think one of our boxes got uh, short circuited, which is why we had a little bit of a delay and interruption in our coverage. Apologies for that. But thank you very much for lending us uh, your ears. We've got lots of going on elsewhere. Ian Danto was uh, looking after you rather nicely from Forest Green against Birmingham. Our ball is on the uh, edge of the Wolves penalty area, having already conceded once tonight. Playing it wide out to the left. Toti towards the touchline. Johnny Otto manages to pick it up and travels infield. Plays a reverse ball into the path of Ryan A. Norrie and James Milner steps in front of him and clears away. James Milner back in the team making his first appearance of 2023 after a little injury. He's nearly been at Liverpool for eight years now. All given away cheaply by Liverpool to Adama Traore. He looks to escape past Simicast, who brings him down rather cruelly. And that's going to be a uh, free kick. Newland Lepetegui is screaming at the assistant on this near side, the fourth official, because he wants a... Uh, I think that's Craig Pawson down there not listed on the team sheet tonight but I think that's Craig Pawson who's telling him please don't ask for a yellow card in that manner he did thrust his hand into the air yeah. and wave an imaginary yellow it's such a cynical foul and Traore would have been away and then imagine being on a yellow against Traore for the rest of the evening so it was borderline ball played down the right from the free kick by Gian Martino into Adama Traore back to Gian Martino. he's got room to get across in here or do just that towards the far post Aignori was offside I think when he went to head the ball it wasn't a great header anyway it went over the bar and it's uh, going to be a free kick for Liverpool Cueven Kelleher Kelleher is going to take it and Wolves behind already after 13 minutes Harvey Elliott with the goal and Liverpool though I'm sure will give them encouragement at some point they've conceded six goals and lost both of their last two away trips ninth in the Premier League I mentioned it earlier I thought the FA Cup may be their best route into uh, Europe next season certainly the way things are going uh, both Chelsea and Liverpool who uh, play each other on Saturday ninth and 10th in the Premier League ludicrous really when you think about their form over the last 10-15 years that they'll be playing off in that sort of scenario on Saturday lunchtime live 
on Talk Sport. Ball out of play on this near touchline. You're listening to the FA Cup. 19 minutes gone. Wolverhampton Wanderers nil. Liverpool won in the replay. The right to play Brighton on the agenda. Ball thrown down the right side by Lem Bakisa, the Jamaican, the young 19-year-old. Sent into the path of Raul Jimenez, who's getting better and better and better as he gets up to full fitness and he's causing a few problems for the defenders once again. He was... Uh, a real thorn in the side of Liverpool in the first game. Here is uh, Hodge, who's been a real tenacious acquisition, coming through the ranks and being pushed in during the uh, first few weeks of the Lepetegui reign. A young man who was signed from Manchester City's youth system. Yeah, good player, Joe Hodge. Very good pro, top pro, uses the ball well. Steve Davis trusted him, gave him some chances, and he's taken that opportunity, and I think he impressed on that little mini break over in Spain, so credit him keeping his shirt and staying in the side. Remember, Kisa is asking uh, Raul Jimenez to make more movement for him as he throws the ball in from the right side, then gives it away cheaply to Thiago. Carvalho tries to escape, it was a, an aggressive pullback by Remember, Kisa. It's going to be a free kick as a result. Yeah, no complaints there, and again, it'll be a good battle. Young players against each other. Um, you know, Lemba Kisa again, another one, an academy graduate. Saw him get opportunities against Arsenal, played a few times again in, in, in the cup competitions. But good battle, it'll be a good battle against young Carvalho, uh, Dexter, and, and Carvalho. Looking forward to seeing it. I think our producer Declan asked uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers what happened uh, during that power surge. And uh, the response was, I think there's a power cut, floodlights running on backup. Cracking. Ball out of play on this near side. <laughs> Liverpool attacking the goal away to our left-hand side. There was an interruption in play, but since then Liverpool have been pretty fluid. They've got the opening goal of the game, and they lead by a goal to nil. And that's a bit dangerous for Wolverhampton Wanderers, bearing in mind they don't score too many goals, only 12 in the Premier League so far this season, Matt. Yeah, but it's just crazy because they started the game well, I felt, and then a good chance for Nori. He was on his own, so he had to get the shot off. Wolves appealing for handball. And then, just to concede in that manner, it just, it just didn't look right, but they still kept pushing up. Here come Liverpool again, and there's a foul there on the edge of the penalty area. Nevers looking a little bit guilty. And uh, Fabio Carvalho gives a thumbs up to uh, Andre Mariner. And slightly unnecessary for Wolves to give the ball away and then commit a foul. Yeah, they got caught playing out the back, and they want it. And this is what Lopetegui wants the team to do. He wants them to build from the back. They got to be comfortable of handling the ball. And Ruben Neves is probably one of the best ball players in this Wolves team. But he just took his eye off it. Ball went under his foot. Carvalho, clever play, nips in. He brings him down. And this is a, a real dangerous sort of range because his players like it's very difficult for a goalkeeper. You got to try and protect your side. You set your wall up, but you know players can get it up and down from this range. So. Three players over the ball again, who will be taking it, but a needless foul to give away. And uh, yeah, Jose Sarr looks quite concerned lining this wall up. Thiago, Costa Simicas, and James Milner standing over it. Last goal was against Leicester a few uh, years ago from the penalty spot. James Milner, it's left to Thiago, who scoops it forward towards Canate. It's a bit of a waste of a free kick. Back in from Milner, flicked on towards Carvalho, away by Collins, who hooked it from the edge of the six yard box. Collected by Canate. Offside flag has already gone up. It's going to be a free kick on the left edge of the six yard box, away to our left hand side. And, you know, you mentioned it. it was a great opportunity, a brilliant place to have a free kick, and they didn't make the most of that at all, Liverpool. Yeah, very strange. I thought maybe it was going to be one of those ones they knock it and. Uh... Milner goes on and drives it, but it was obviously a decoy, he dinked it in and sort of, yeah, chance of wasted. It's from that range, it's what, just over 25 yards and just pretty central. You'd, you'd want to get a shot off there, but yeah, chance came to nothing. Okay, they're causing a few issues again, aren't they? Uh, Orbhampton Wanderers playing out from the back and uh, giving themselves a little bit of uh, grief by not managing to get it up towards the halfway line. Liverpool's high press is doing its job. This is Neves who's getting away from Cater. And now a chance to swirl it out towards the far side, where it's collected by Ait Nori. Back in field, it goes to Toti. And then it's collected by Neves and then back across to Nathan Collins. Collins into Johnny Otto, who tries to progress up over the halfway line. Then Bakisa and Johnny Otto almost occupying the same space at this moment in time. Maybe a shift in system here for uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers will keep an eye on that as Bicic goes in for a tackle on halfway. 
releases Keita, who then sends it through the centre circle out to the right, and Elliot, who immediately shoves it on towards Cody Gakpo. He's beaten in the air by six foot four inch Nathan Collins, but then Elliot has come back again and won it high. And then Tiago to Gakpo sets up Keita inside the area. Ain't Nuri trying to get back at him. He sends it back to the edge of the area. Gakpo's got it again. Wide to Milner. Chance to cross back to the edge of the right side of the box, and it's with Keita, Gakpo, and then he falls on the floor. Referee says no chance of a penalty. It's shot up towards the halfway line, and it's collected on halfway by. Uh, Raul Jimenez who is manhandled by Canate it's going to be a free kick on halfway for Wolverhampton Wanderers who trail here by goal to nil that was vintage Jimenez the way he linked up you know held up the play won the free kick got Wolves at the pitch but definitely a change in system Johnny Otto's gone from uh, left back to right side of a back three Eight Norrie's gone to left wing back uh, Dexter there is, is a right wing back and a very strange free kick to give away there by Dexter uh, Lembekis who thought the ball was going to bounce over him but he's still on the pitch and he, he handled it so, so the Wolverhampton Wanderers now have gone Lembekis at right wing back Ait Nori at left wing back and Johnny almost playing as a right sided centre half with Collins and uh, Toti yeah yeah, and, and he does that before change but not that early in a, in, in a game to change the system to about five Jimenez running through the centre, getting towards the midway point of the Liverpool half. He's brought down by Naby Keita, and what they can't understand is why they haven't got a yellow card here. And Julian Lepetegui is getting right in the ear of the fourth official. And Jurgen Klopp has come across, and he's had a few words with him as well. They're pointing at each other, they're screaming at each other, they're shouting at each other. Klopp's been forced back into his technical area. One or two of the others on the bench getting involved too. But Lepetegui is absolutely furious about the fact that a yellow card wasn't given for a second cynical foul. Two big boys as well. <laughs> Get in the middle of that, Craig Paulson. Uh, here is Neves playing it square, where it's picked up now by uh, Johnny. Infield to uh, Hodge, who clips it over towards the far side. Taken down and then sent into the middle by eight Norris, headed away by Canate and then picked up by Fabio Carvalho, runs up towards the halfway line. Tight on the near touchline. The ball is with Simicast deep inside his own half. Liverpool trying to build their way out of trouble here. Haven't managed to do so and they've turned it over Wolves. And Traore's got it. Midway in solid opposition territory. Simicast has committed another foul. Lopetegui hasn't asked for a yellow card this time. But how many times has he gonna, is he going to commit a foul before the referee takes action? Exactly, it's persistent fouling and They've, they've all been on the edge that one was his, on an isolated incident that's not a bad foul but there's been other ones and I just think that as like I said if you if you only what just over not even half an hour in and you know as a, as a fullback you've got a Dharma Traore running at you time after time with more than an hour to play that's not easy when you're on a yellow card so these are these are important moments for me yeah Wolverhampton Wanderers fans giving a bit of stick to uh, their uh, Liverpool-based compatriots. Uh, free kick to be taken on this near side, though. Wolverhampton Wanderers trying to create something from the right side of the attack. It's going to be Matinho who takes it, right-footed, deep towards the penalty spot. Headed away by Thiago. Comes out to Neves, who hits it on the volley from 30 yards out, straight into the body of Joe Gomez. It flicks away towards the near touchline. Ain't Nuri recycles it. Back to Johnny. Johnny looks up, plays it across the halfway line to Lembekisa and then uh, Neves dropping into that back three sends it high and up towards the right side of Martinho and Jimenez backs into Thiago wins the ball helps it on Martinho back around the corner in towards Jimenez once again there's no one waiting in the centre for the cross and it's cleared away by a rather lonely looking James Milner inside the 18 yard box and he manages to clear it away out to Harvey Elliott who puts it out on the far side a spicy first 27 and a half minutes in this cup tie a replay after a 2-2 draw up at Anfield it's Wolverhampton Wanderers nil Liverpool 1 on Talk Sport yeah really really good tempo I felt that Wolves started well then Liverpool had a, you know got back into the game and obviously got the goal were pressing higher good tempo change of system for Wolves which has actually you know brought them a bit of joy and you know Traore's right up there with uh, Raul Jimenez fans are in good voice say really really good tempo enjoying it two, two teams working hard and yes there's a the changes but the passion that's shown on this pitch from the dugouts the fans both teams do want to progress in this round I'm telling you yeah well Wolverhampton Wanderers went out of the League Cup didn't they recently and they weren't happy about that they don't want to go out the FA Cup that quick Limbakisa is uh, on starters orders and gone down the right hand side he's latched onto a decent ball 
from uh, Neves out towards this right-hand side. Try to play infield to Adama Traore. Hit Simicast and goes out for a throw in level with the edge of the penalty area. 29 gone. Talk sport. Wolves nil. Liverpool won. Liverpool's goal coming from Harvey Elliott. His fourth goal of the season. Here's uh, Adama Traore press pressing and pushing up against Gomez, whose clearance was blocked, but it's fallen nicely for Thiago up into midfield and Harvey Elliott then goes wide out to the right and Milner Milner takes on eight Nori tries to beat him for pace goes on the outside doesn't do a bad job and then goes down looking for a foul wins a foul the flag goes up on the far side and more frustration for Wolverhampton Wanderers and their fans who feel as if Liverpool gaming the system a bit yeah I, I think uh, he did really really well there James Milner because he <laughs> didn't know he still had that in his legs to go and run Young eight Nori like that, really good play, won the free kick, free kick now in a dangerous area to whip it in. I think they'll feel they wasted the last set piece, but now they've got an in-swinger and an out, you know, left foot and right foot over the ball. Wolves want to hold the line. Some good big players there for Liverpool as well, so dangerous opportunity. Milner, older or younger than you? A little bit younger. Only a little bit. Here's Milner towards the far post from the free kick, and Jose Sarr has missed that punch. It's gone back in from Gomez. He's missed a second punch as well. It's come to Gomez again, who tries a little Cruyff turn inside the area. Probably should have gone down because he got clipped from behind. The ball drops inside the box. He's still not clear. No one's taking charge, and eventually it falls to Fabio Carvalho, but the whistle's gone for a foul inside the box, and it is going to be a free kick to Wolverhampton Wanderers. But there was a moment there when Joe Gomez tried a little Cruyff turn. Then Bakisa was coming from the wrong side. He could have gone down. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of contact. It did seem to like wobble him a little, but he's very honest, stayed on his feet. Would have definitely given the referee, um, Andre Mariner, a decision to make. Again, a little bit of a nervy moment for Jose Sarr coming to try and punch it, mix up with his defender. But you're asking me about Milner. I'm, I remember playing against a young Milner when I was coming back from yet another injury. He was playing in the lead side and I thought, you can tell then, top, top player, him, Carson, people like that who came through that lead system. Yeah, it's uh, a long time ago since he was a Leeds United player though now. Yeah, all right, I'm old. <laughs> Ball headed away down the right side in towards uh, Harvey Elliott for Liverpool who lead here by goal to nil. He produces a cross into the box which is blocked by Toti. Goes out to the far side. Recollected by Milner, the captain for the night. Back in field to Stefan Bajcic and then on to uh, Elliott who takes it tight to the touchline, gets it back off Milner, weaves his way to the edge of the box, Cody Gakpo with a strike from just inside the area, right side, difficult angle, and it's a yard over the top of the crossbar as he goes right across the face of goal and out for a goal kick away to our left-hand side. So Liverpool are in front by a goal to nil away at Molyneux tonight, and uh, Jurgen Klopp was quizzed about the reasons for Liverpool's poor form, and lots of theories have been asserted as to why they've been so poor so far this season. He dismissed the notion that the players are no longer listening to his key messaging but he did say they weren't winning tackles they weren't winning challenges often enough but they're certainly a little bit better at it tonight as Jose Sarr gets another ball played back to him short inside the six yard box and he spoons it out for a corner under pressure from Cody Gakpo wow well one of the things that have been questioned is Liverpool's press not being right at the moment and Brighton picking it apart too easily well I'll tell you what tonight even though Wolves have changed the system these Liverpool lads are pressing with intensity purpose intelligence and uh you know they're winning the ball back and you know that was again a very very difficult moment for jose sari ended up passing it out for a corner he's had a couple of those so far in this game he's a very good goalkeeper very popular goalkeeper after his exploits last year he hasn't been as effective this campaign but still you would expect better than that as the ball comes into the penalty area it's uh, bounced off the legs of johnny almost fell loose for tiago but was cleared away out to the right wing position up to uh, Cater from Hodge and Liverpool keeping it inside the Wolves half and keeping them pretty much pinned inside their final third at the moment. Simicast back to halfway. He gets crunched by Adama Traore. The ball goes up into the air. Then Simicast uh, complains he's hurt his ankle. The ball is almost won back by Wolves, but Joe Gomez tosses it over the top and Cody Gakpo is now chasing in behind. The flag has stayed down. He's cut in field. He's got onto his right foot. He has ballooned it. And that is going to land about six yards from the right corner flag. Yeah, just about a goal kick. <laughs> I wondered which side it was going to end up. Uh, tackle there, chasty one from Traore on Simicast, but I think Simicast is fine. I think Liverpool, they're not set back, have they? They've got after it. It's quite to, frantic, isn't it? Yeah, they're looking to get that second goal. They're pressing well. And I thought that chance before from Gakpo, again, a player of his quality, at least should be hitting the target or getting closer for me. And... Liverpool, uh, you know, Jurgen Klopp, I think, will be delighted 
all in all with this team's performance so far. The score is Wolves nil, Liverpool 1 in the FA Cup live on TalkSport with Carling, the UK's number one lager, 18 plus, please drink responsibly. In the National League, Altrincham 1, Maidenhead 1, Aldershot leads Solihull by a goal to nil. Simakas into uh, Vysotic, who's uh, trying to swing that round the corner for Fabio Carvalho, but he got his angles wrong and his power too. And it flicks out in front of Jurgen Klopp and away for a throw into Wolverhampton Wanderers inside their own territory. We've played 34 minutes and it has whizzed by. I mean, partly because the first 10 minutes we were sitting around doing Twitter stuff because we couldn't broadcast because there was a power cut. But we're all back on now, which is good news. And there's only 11 minutes to go before half time. Live on Talk Sport. A little bit later on. Tonight you'll be able to have your say on this game and all the other games, including Forest Green Birmingham, which is the third round game, a first uh, running of that match because the initial game was called off. Uh, Swansea, Bristol City, Wigan, Luton and West Brom, Chesterfield, which gets underway, have got underway at eight o'clock uh, tonight. And uh, you'll be able to have your say straight after this on the sports bar. 03717 a double four. And the guys back on breakfast from six o'clock tomorrow morning analysing this game and all the others. Here's Carvalho played in by Cater into the area. Right footy goes past the goalkeeper, slips it under Jose Sarr. The offside flag goes up. He always looked a yard or so beyond the last defender. Yeah, I was relaxed with that one. I mean, imagine they'll still check it, but it did look well offside. And you could tell just the way the players were as well. Wolves holding that high line, ball slipped through. Good finish, but yeah, they're not really complaining, and yeah, definitely offside. Yeah, it was definitely uh, offside. The goal disallowed, free kick given, and Wolves get things back underway again. And those old gold shirts with black shorts and old gold socks, they're attacking the goal away to our right in this first half. There's a Jack Hayward stand away to our right, in one tiered, almost cop like stand, which is jam packed with people wearing their big padded jackets, huge wolf scarves and uh, knitted hats tonight. We've all got hats on tonight. Oh no, I haven't got a hat on, have I? I just got a lot of hair at the moment. Yeah, okay, all right, you got a bit of hair. I'm very envious. <laughs> There's so much of it. I haven't had it cut for so long. I actually felt like I had a hat on. Uh, ball played in field towards Thiago. He sends it square up towards uh, Simakas, who's on the edge of the area left side. Across into the box, which almost gets through towards Elliot, who just peeled away from Ryan Ait Nori and it's flicked away by Ait Nori and out for a throw in over on the far side. The Algerian who played 26 minutes off the bench of the weekend got into a really good opportunity, a good position early on in the game when he ended up one on one with Kelleher but couldn't find the finish. That's probably Wolves' best chance of the game and that seems a long time ago now. Yeah, it is. I think Liverpool have taken hold of this. Wolves are struggling to build at all, have any uh, sustained any control possession, struggling to get out of their own half really and, and link up. Uh, Raul Jimenez seems a pretty isolated figure and I say Lopetegui again, I don't know if he'll change system again, try and go back to a, a back four, but Liverpool are they're in pretty good control of this game and Keller has hardly been uh, hardly been worked at all. Milner into Gakpo, new signing in the uh, January transfer window from PSV Eindhoven. He did score 13 goals for PSV this season, but most of them were early in the campaign. He did have a bit of a dry spell prior to going to the World Cup and starring in that tournament. He was one of the breakout stars, the young breakout stars, only 23 years of age. He's leading the line for Liverpool again tonight. The ball is out on the far side. Elliot for Liverpool. Midway inside Wolves half. Back into the centre it goes. Thiago turning from an offside position inside the box. Tries to net from inside the area. He actually sent it wide, but the offside flag was up straight away. Anyway, Aldershot doubled their lead in a matter of minutes against Solihull in the National League. And they lead by two goals to nil against Solihull. And here it's 1-0 to Liverpool away at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Tomorrow night we've got Premier League action for you. Live football, Crystal Palace against Manchester United, key Premier League match. Jim Ratcliffe entering the, the formal process to buy Manchester United today. I'm sure Simon Jordan will have something to say on that between 10 and 1 tomorrow. Lembakisa wins the ball on the right-hand side, but he just doesn't have the control to continue his run down this right touchline. And as he gets to the midpoint of the Liverpool half, he just loses control of the ball, it skips off his toes and goes straight out of play. Yeah, because the first time Wolves sort of got into Liverpool half, but then, yeah, an unforced error. Jimenez wins it back again. This time, it is deep inside Liverpool territory. Wide on the right, Limbakisa goes back to halfway. The fans wanted them to continue to thrust forward. They didn't do that. Lopetegui has just told him to go back and not get too excited, Limbakisa, on this near touch line. And... Uh, 
Moutinho is conducting again from the centre of the pitch. On the halfway line, Collins finds Lembekisa. First time ball down the right side looking for Jimenez. Jimenez trying to get the better of Simikas, who kicks it out for a throw in on this near side. And it goes out for a Wolverhampton Wanderers ball. There's been a goal at the Hawthorns. Here's Jeff Peters. It's West Brom 1, Chesterfield 0. It's been scored by uh, John Swift. Really good finish. Played in the league at the weekend. Um, most of the players here uh, played in the first match. Not all regulars, but fine goal from Swift. And West Brom lead Chesterfield 1-0. Terrific, by the way, the uh, game between the two couple of weeks ago, what is it, 10 days ago now, West Brom Javi and Chesterfield finished 3-3, uh, three, three. it's terrific entertainment. Here is Neves down the right, been terrific entertainment here as Traore beats the offside track, gets into the area, right-footed shot, caught it brilliantly but didn't get it on target and steers it narrowly wide of the left-hand upright. He went powering through like a 100-metre sprinter, he got the better of Gomez and Simicas, found himself at a 45-degree angle for the goal. And he went towards the near post, Matt Murray, should he have gone across the goalkeeper. Well, sometimes players now, they like to try and roof it and hope that the goalkeeper drops and try and get in that top corner. I think Kelleher does very well because he stays back and he stands and says, I call that transferring the pressure. Go on and you beat me. I'm not going to rush you. I'm not going to make your mind up. If you can hit the corners, I'll give it you. And he's got to try to go high. I think, yes, go across him because then if he does get a touch to goalkeeper, eight Nori would have been tapping it in. But a good chance for Wolves. And I think they've gone back to a back four again now, Wolves. Matt Murray, the uh, former Wolverhampton Wanderers goalkeeper who played in an FA Cup quarter-final for Wolverhampton Wanderers 20 years ago. There's not many people that have played in those. A long time ago. My first ever year here as well as a full-time player, we got to uh, the semi-finals. And uh, I wasn't involved on that, but I was involved in the early rounds and we lost to Arsenal. Christopher Ray scored past Hans Sagers at Villa Park. So oh. a few decent cup runs while I was involved at Wolves. Gosh, you are old, aren't you? Very old. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> <laughs> he knows I'm a lot older than him. Five minutes to go before half time. Wolves coming down the left with Eight Nori, skipping towards the edge of the area. Eight Nori continuing to go. He's travelled a long way here before Canate stands like a brick wall in front of him and says, You ain't going any further, fella. And the ball flicks out to the far side and goes out for a Wolves throw. Matinho takes it on. Wolves just getting a little bit more of a foothold in the game now after a period where Liverpool completely dominated this uh, FA Cup third round replay. They're on the front foot, they got the goal. And then since then they took charge, but here come Wolves again down the left with Eight Nori, who is offside over on the far side. Just didn't time his run particularly well. Then Milner left a little bit on him. Would have been a free kick if he'd stayed onside initially, but he didn't. And it's out of play over on the far side. It's going to be a free kick to Liverpool. The visitors who are three and a half minutes away from a half-time lead. Yeah, and I think Wolves changing back to the system of a, of a back four, a 4-3-3. Three, three. They're playing with a lot more width. Eight Nori will be disappointed there because when you can see along the line, you shouldn't be offside like that. So good line from Liverpool. But I think the change back to a, a, a back four has allowed Wolves to have a bit more possession, get up the pitch, not be pressed as high. Um, but all in all, I think Jurgen Klopp will definitely, not only be in ahead, but just uh, what the manner of the game will be the, the happier of the two managers for sure. So Johnny, who, who was playing as a right centre-half, is now back on the other side of the pitch, playing as a left-back. Yeah. Yeah, he's had a dizzying first 42 minutes, hasn't he? Because As he's Adama Traore brings down Simicas, and it's his first real foul, actually, Adama Traore. He gets a yellow card for that. Now, if you've been following the game with us, you'll know that Costa Simicas has committed one or two other challenges, and there's been a few cynical ones that haven't yielded yellow cards for Liverpool players. Julian Lepetegui, who hasn't been shy in coming forward to the fourth official, He's absolutely furious. Can you understand why? You can, and Ruben Neves is pointing as well to the referee, going, well, what about all those Liverpool fouls and, like, pointing his finger around the pitch? And in isolation, probably Simakas, Simakas's fouls shouldn't be a yellow, but when you've made that many and then Troy makes the first one, he'll be saying, hang on a minute, this isn't fair. And I think there's probably a little bit of hangover as well from the first leg of the VAR goal. Wolves feel things are a bit unjust, but just the inconsistency, I'm sure. And Neves felt like he was fouled in midfield. The ball goes back towards Toti and he sees it to the goalkeeper via Collins. It goes upfield. There's a flick by Thiago. Jimenez holds it on really well. And then Traore tries to get past a combination of Carvalho, Thiago and Simicas and finds Hodge, who then retreats into a sort of right fullback position before lofting it forward. Gomez allows it to bounce across his body and then will restart play once again from deep inside the Liverpool half. They lead by a goal to nil Liverpool. The goal coming after 
just 13 minutes Harvey Elliott with his fourth goal of the season a shot which appeared to take some sort of deflection or it's certainly out Fox Jose Sarr who's usually a very good goalkeeper and he's a very big goalkeeper as well to be fair it's it went over his head it seemed a, little, a, bit, a bit strange didn't it because it wasn't right in the corner and it wasn't yeah it's just the, the way where it hit the net I think Jose Sarr is a bit high but it just yeah the way it sort of went over him made me think the trajectory just something yeah. didn't look quite right we would say we'd seen a replay of it but we can't because all the monitors have died since the power cut yeah, I do want to see it back, but I think a goalkeeper of his quality shouldn't be getting beaten from there with a strike like that. that that's just, you know, my opinion. A minute to go. It's unlike you to be critical of goalkeepers. Uh, I'm a big fan of him, and I think he's brilliant, and the saves he makes, and it just... I, I do think when he was that far down the line, maybe five, six yards, and just to beat him there, it just it just didn't look right, and that's why I think it took the nick. But I just think it was more, it caught him out a little yeah. in the transition. He, he, he certainly wasn't set, was he? No, nah, he wasn't in a good position, and yeah, it just, and it wasn't right in the corner. It was only midway up the net, so it was a, it was a, it was a strange one. Uh, I think a, a lot of people were expecting Wolves to start with Maria Sarkic today, the uh, Montenegro goalkeeper, born in Grimsby. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he might well end up uh, trying to find a new home if he uh, doesn't get any more game time during the course of this season, which would be unlikely now if Wolves were to go out of this competition, which at half-time looks like it might be the most likely outcome, bearing in mind the paucity of their goal scoring over the course of the season. And they trail by goal today with two minutes added at the end of the first half here at Molyneux. Ball tossed in by Hodge and then played back to Nathan Collins, across to... Neves, they're inside their own half here as they build the play and try to get something back before the break. The ball was switched up towards the tall, slender figure of the Mexican Jimenez and then one by Jao Martinho, pings it out to Traore, who's hugging the touchline, moves down towards the corner flag, sets it back for Lembakisa, and then it's on to Hodge and then square in field to Nathan Collins. They keep circulating the ball here, but they need to get it forward. Toti takes a stride forward towards the edge of the 18-yard box. Otto with a cross, hits the back of Milner and goes out of play over on the far side and away for a throw-in. Better, wasn't it, from Wolves? Definitely better from Wolverhampton Wanderers as we approach the second minute of two added at the end of the first 45. It's with Elliot, who's won it back in the right fullback position and then Milner plays it against the Mexican Jimenez. Goes out of play and away for a goal kick away to our right hand side we mentioned that Jimenez has had a sort of upturn in performances he looked more like his old self the goals though are the all important thing aren't they getting them flowing is going to be really 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 important for Wolves if he can get back to the player he was it will feel like a new signing and obviously Costa's come in and and he's you know it's, again he'd missed a lot of football it just feels like Wolves don't really have that that goal scorer now that real you know, that, that, that fox in the box, if you like. And Jimenez brings a bit of everything, but yeah, he needs to be scoring still, getting into double figures. But he's, he's been quite lonely tonight, you know. He's not had much service. It was interesting when Traore got the ball, how hard um, Carvalho worked to double up with Gomez and stop him. But been difficult chances for Wolves. Uh, Thiago down the right onto Elliot after again and Wolves have just given the ball away inside their own half and Toti has to use his body to stop Cody Gakpo from winning it inside the 18-yard box. And look, you know, Wolves have just lost one of their last seven matches recently and they have looked more composed and confident under the new management but there have been a, a few issues uh, tonight giving the ball away on the edge of the area and in and around it and Liverpool who know that they are in the Champions League but realistically realise that this is their best chance of silverware will be buoyed by what was a much more intense aggressive and assertive first half performance they lead at the break thanks to Harvey Elliott's 13th minute goal and Wolverhampton Wanderers have got to come from behind if they're going to stay in the FA Cup. Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Liverpool won. Sam, thanks very much. Elsewhere, Forest Green, one up on Birmingham. Uh, that one not a replay. These are Swansea nil, Bristol City nil at half time. Wigan nil, Luton nil. Uh, West Bromley, Chesterfield 1 nil, 8 o'clock kick off that. And here it's Wolves nil, Liverpool 1. Let's take a look at the half time highlights with Carling. FA Cup Halftime Highlights on Talk Sport with Carling, the UK's number one lager. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. Well, Matt Murray, I'd love to talk about the inconsistency of the refereeing, but I'm not going to. Let's talk about the uh, Liverpool goal because Harvey Elliott has scored it from range. You've questioned it. You've now seen it again. So, should the keeper have saved it? I think what Jose Sarr's done, he's had time to recover, but he's so high and I'm just watching him there and it hasn't even taken a nick, but... 
Go and get in position. Yes, it's a counter-attack, but now get in your goal. He's driving, he's driving, but what it does is he gets to only about seven yards. He's about seven yards out, so when uh, Jose Sala is, so when he's, the shot comes in, he's gone right into the, you know, midway up the goal, and I, he's got to save it. It's because of his position. Where he's starting, then no, he can't save it, but he's still running back as the ball struck. But I just don't know why he's not got into position. He's had time to to, to, to readjust and, and get there. When you go back to this first up the first of the move, Kelleher has the ball at his feet in his own six-yard area. It goes to Cavallio and Simicast play it out from a left-back position. Uh, Harvey Elliott picks it up in his own half and then runs and then shoots. He's got plenty of time to get back. Exactly. Sometimes you might have come for a cross and punched it or be caught out of position a bit. But I don't know what he's expecting either because you think from there he is only going to shoot. It's not like there's other runners. As you say, he's carried the ball a long, long way. And then on the moment of impact, he's not set. So then he ends up diving backwards into his goal. He can't actually dive forward and make the save. And I think a goalkeeper of his experience, of his quality, he should be doing better. So I am going to, I, I would say I'm a big fan of him. I think he's brilliant. And I don't like hammering goalkeepers, but that's a goalkeeping error for me. Yeah, you can call that. You, you have the uh, experience and knowledge to call that. So we'll take your word for it. It's not top bins, postage stamp or anything like that. He should keep it out. That was all thanks to Carling, the UK's number one lager. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. FA Cup Halftime Highlights on Talk Sport with Carling, the UK's number one lager. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. You know what, I'd like to think that the early power failure was because Jeff Beck decided to give it one last blast on the guitar, cranked it up to 11, launched into high-ho silver lining and blew every fuse at this Molyneux Stadium, literally going out with a bang. Well, the silver lining for the old gold is that they're still in this tie. Liverpool lead 1-0, second half to come live on Talk Sports. FA Cup Live on Talk Sport with Carling, the UK's number one lager. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. The best thing about Friday, you're on Friday rules. Right. Monday and Tuesday rules, well, they're strict. That's a no-fun zone. Yeah. On Wednesday, you can have a treat, but you have to admit that you've been naughty. <laughs> yeah. The Thursday rule is wait for it. Then it's Friday. Treat day. Go for it. At Costa Coffee, we're treating our Costa Club members to a new deal every Friday. Because Fridays are a big deal at Costa Coffee. Subject to availability only at selected stores. Excludes delivery terms and conditions at costa.co.uk. When you need medical help fast, use NHS 111 online to go from home to an urgent treatment centre. Mr Williams, please come through. Or a pharmacy. Hello, pharmacist will see you now. Or if needed... Stay where you are and get a call from a nurse, doctor or paramedic. Get assessed and directed to the right place for you in as little as 90 seconds. Use NHS 111 online. Welcome to the Rosie Hotel. Hello. We're a little early, but thought we might take a dip in the pool before we check in. Of course. Sorry, Mrs Cook, but it looks like your stay isn't for another five months. Yes, that's right. Like getting your money's worth? Enjoy a freshly prepared cheeseburger. Just £1.19. Part of the McDonald's saver menu. From 11am, price of participation may vary. How many subscriptions do you have? And how many do you really use? Households right now are spending an average of £422 a year. With the Lloyds Bank Subscriptions Manager on our app, you can block or cancel the ones you no longer need in a few simple taps. It's one of our many useful tools to help you stay on top of your money. To find out more, go to lloydsbank.com forward slash cost of living. Lloyds Bank by your side. We know sport is great on talk sports, but when you want great music to soundtrack your day, on listen to Virgin Radio. Virgin Radio. DAB Digital Radio, on the app, on your smart speaker, and on virginradio.co.uk. Under pressure. Virgin Radio. The FA Cup. And he scores! FA Cup kickoff. Oh, it's a screaming goal! On Talk Sport. Big night of FA Cup ties, and we're round the grounds on Talk Sport. Half time here, Wolves nil, Liverpool one. Second half to come, live commentary with... Sam Matface and Matt Murray. Let's get half-time at the Swansea.com stadium with TalkSports' Lawrence Mora. 
Bristol City nil, Swansea nil at the break and not a game that will live long in the memory quite frankly. Swans with more than 65% possession and one shot on target. That shot flew off the shin of Bristol City defender Zach Viner who was trying to hack the ball clear and was relieved to see his own keeper Max O'Leary leap to his left, pluck the ball out of the sky as it was looping towards goal. At the other end, Bristol City strikers would have had a single shot on or off target. These teams have played out two draws this season so we could be in for a long night at the fairly sparse crowd here at the Swansea.com stadium. At the break, Swansea nil, Bristol City nil. What's happening in the first half of the DW Stadium in the FA Cup? Matt Jones. Yeah, not a classic here either. It's Wigan nil, Luton nil at the break and not too much action to keep those fans who have made the trip to the DW Stadium uh, warm so far. The bulk of the chances have fallen to Luton though and they probably should have been ahead as early as the second minute when Woodrow got into the box and lifted the ball over the bar via a deflection. After that, Adebayo had a shot saved. It was a fairly tame header though and there hasn't been a shot on target since then and that was the 11th minute. Woodrow managing to put wide of the bar with his header Bree with a free kick that went well off target from 25 yards and then the other end Wigan had one shot and one shot only and that was Asgard who uh, couldn't get his low effort from 20 yards on target extra time looms unless the finishing is better at the break it's Wigan nil Luton nil uh, the two sides at the new lawn separated by an absolute worldy Ian Danter Yes, half time. Forest Green Rovers 1, Birmingham City 0. Forest Green 45 minutes away from their first ever fourth round tie. And they're on track for round four thanks to Stevenson's rocket. Ben Stevenson launched an absolutely fantastic 25 yard shot when he was given the opportunity to shoot after a corner had only been half cleared. And it beat Neil Etheridge all ends up. That was in the sixth minute of the game. Also, Etheridge had to be very sharp to deny Miles Pitt Harris on loan from Brentford in the 20th minute with a sharp shot on the turn. That was tipped over a, for a corner that came to nothing. And Forest Green fully deserve their 1 0 lead at the break. They've been first to most things, particularly in midfield. Birmingham looks staggeringly inept. No wonder they've lost four on the spin, playing the way they are at the moment. Lots of work for John Eustace to do in the changing room with his players at half time. But Ian Birchnell will be delighted. The shock is on. At the break, Forest Green 1, Birmingham City 0. Remember, Forest Green bottom of League One, Birmingham in the Championship. Ben Stephen X of Wolves, a former Wolves youngster with an absolutely brilliant goal. Still playing in the first half of the Hawthorns. So what's going on there, Jeff Peters? Yeah, five minutes to the break. It's West Brom 1, Chesterfield 0. No repeat so far of the absolute banger we had in the first game between the sides. West Brom went ahead midway uh, in the half. Bit soft from the visitors, really. Livermore headed forward. John Swift inside the area, right side. Called a, a lovely effort. Left-footed into the bottom corner, his fourth of the season. They came close to a second when Swift played a delightful through ball which Grady Dean Garner poked goalwards but the on-rushing Lucas Kovalan on loan from Port Vale made the block. No real moments of magic from the non-leaguers as yet. Uh, it's West Brom 1, Chesterfield nil. Steve Ball on the pitch. A Wolves legend over 300 goals in just over 560 appearances for Wolverhampton Wanderers. What they wouldn't give for a prolific striker like that these days, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Let's get the half-time odds with Labrooks. Odds update on Talk Sports with Ladbrokes. Are you in? Let's go. Play at ladbrokes.com, 18plusbegambleaware.org. Right, let's discuss this one here. Wolves nil, Liverpool one. Alex Apati, what do you make of this so far? Yeah, I mean, Wolves aren't completely out of this one, are they? I mean, the scoreline certainly wouldn't suggest so. They, they are 12-1 to 1 to win in 90 minutes, and, and understandably so, but you wouldn't back against them finding finding a goal. You're completely right. If only they had a, a, a Steve Ball. At, at, even at his age now, he, uh, he's one of those players, isn't he? You'd back to find the net if he was uh, if he was on the bench. But 100 to 30 for the draw at 90 minutes, and Wolves are 9 to 2 to qualify. Uh, Liverpool 3 to 10 as things stand for the win. Uh, one thing they don't do at the moment is keep clean sheets. I think they've conceded in their last seven games across all comps. Uh, if there is still reason to be cheerful for for a Wolves fan, surely that's it. Both teams to score is a four to five shot, and that's purely because of Liverpool's horrendous defensive record of late but that being said Wolves aren't exactly serial goal scorers themselves are they when we mentioned both managers have made a lot of changes to the starting lineups and you're looking on the bench and wondering who might come on and make a difference for the hosts here Diego Costa maybe ex-Chelsea 
and Liverpool and, and Klopp no doubt will have an eye on that massive game at Chelsea at the, against Chelsea at the weekend. I imagine Klopp will want to avoid bringing any key players on in this half. Harvey Elliott with the only goal of the game so far. Was it a great strike or was it bad goalkeeping somewhere in between? He's 14-1 to 1 to get the next goal of the game. I do fancy the host to get on the score sheet but I fancy Liverpool to win this. 11-2 to 2 says they win the game 2-1. I'll take that. Alex, thank you very much. That's the latest odds with Labrooks Play at labrooks.com, 18 plus, begambleaware.org. Odds update on Talk Sports with Ladbrokes. Are you in? Let's go. Play at labrooks.com, 18 plus, begambleaware.org. So over the next two nights on the Talk Sport Network, we've got three huge commentaries. Tomorrow, it's Crystal Palace against Manchester United in the Premier League on TalkSport, while Leeds against, against Cardiff, live on TalkSport 2 in the FA Cup third round. That's a replay. Then on Thursday, Tottenham travel to Manchester City in the Premier League, with both sides still smarting from derby defeats of the weekend. The future of Spurs boss Antonio Conte is coming to question again in recent weeks. And today, when asked about the club's long-term strategy, he seemingly questioned why his higher-ups, Daniel Levy and Fabio Paratici, don't speak to the media more before or after matches. Listen to this. In England, I think uh, there, there is a bad habit that uh, there is only the coach to speak and to explain. Uh, I have never seen the medical department to come here to explain why this uh, uh, player is uh, 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 having a difficulty to recover. Uh, it's the same also, I, I never seen uh, the, 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 the club uh, a sporting director to, to come here and to explain the strategy, the, the vision of, of the club. is in England because in Italy, for example, in, in Italy, every game, every game before the game, there is a, a, a person of the club that go with the media and, uh, and then uh, has to uh, answer many questions. I think that for us, uh, should be, could be really, really uh, better because otherwise uh, and uh, we put uh, every time uh, our face on the, there is only one face to explain other situation that I think maybe is better also the club to come here to explain wow that sounds like the worst deflection I've ever heard Matt Murray what's he talking about yeah I've never heard that before either but <laughs> at the end of the day in England it's not really what what they do so um, but at the end of the day, it feels like a little bit of a, a, de a deflection, maybe, or a, a, a strategy to get a certain reaction. But I've never heard a manager say that before. No, so I think Spurs want uh, answers to different questions than that uh, from Antonio Conte. Uh, elsewhere, National League tonight, Altrincham 2, Maidenhead 2, Aldershot 2 up at Solly or Moors. Uh, these are half times, the uh, other games postponed. National League North, AFC Fylde 0, Buxton 0, Telford 1, Kettering 1, the rest were postponed tonight in National League South. Ebbsfleet won, Chelmsford nil, Farnborough nil, Slough Town nil. The rest postponed in the FA Trophy. Fourth round, Torquay were two up on Taunton. It is now 2-2. Two -two. Don't forget British billionaire Sir Jim Ratcliffe's company, Ineos, have formally and officially put themselves into the process to buy Manchester United Football Club. Uh, he's from Manchester, United fan. There'll be more on that on Breakfast with Laura and Ali from 6 tomorrow. Gabby will join them at 8. And more on White and Jordan will get the insight from former Premier League chairman Simon Jordan tomorrow from 10 on Talk Sport. Teams are out. We're ready for the second half. Wolves got work to do. Liverpool lead by a goal to nil. Here's the second half on Talk Sport with Matt Murray and Sam Matspace. And two changes at the start of the second half for Wolverhampton Wanderers who trail by a goal to nil. And Matthias Nunez and Nelson Semedo coming on. And I think it's going to be Hodge and Lembekisa who are coming off. We haven't got confirmation of that now. I think we're about to get it. Lembekisa and Hodge coming off and Semedo and Nunez coming on. How will that change things? Well, very experienced players. Um, you know, what won't change the system, but you, you think with Semedo, he's going to get forward a little bit more. And I thought Lembekisa did fine. And Matej Nunez you know top top player linked to Liverpool yeah so uh, heavily actually yeah very very heavily so he'll give that creativity he'll get forward and hopefully um, just give more control in that midfield I think and just that you know I think Joe Hodge again he did fine but he's a young man uh, again in a difficult uh, situation so yeah two more senior players if you like yeah two more senior players as we get off and underway at the start of the 
second half, the half time at West Brom, and it's still 1 0 to the home side there. Uh, here at Molyneux, it's 1 0 to Liverpool, and Liverpool have the ball shooting from left to right in red shirts, red shorts, red socks at the start of this second half, and old gold shirts, black shorts and old gold socks for Wolverhampton Wanderers who are attacking the goal away to our left in the second half and before last week's game Liverpool had won the previous seven meetings against Wolves the last Wolves victory came in the FA Cup Raul Jimenez and Ruben Neves with the goals back in January 2019 Daniel Sturridge played for Liverpool that night whatever happened to him uh, Wolves also beat Liverpool in the FA Cup at Anfield in 2017 with goals from Richard Stearman and Andreas Weiman. Another match that was live on TalkSport. They were a championship team then, led by Paul Lambert. But if they are to turn this one around, they need goals. And that means bodies in the box, Matt Murray. And that's something they didn't do in the first half. When they got their chances, usually whoever was on the ball charging into the area was on their own. Yeah, there was a time, wasn't there, where Raul Jimenez got the ball and he crossed it, but there was no one at the back post to tap it in. And then other times when Eight Nori got forward, he had to go alone. And that, then that block shot ended up with the Liverpool goal. Another time when Troy went in, difficult angle. So, yeah, definitely getting more bodies forward would be something that Lopetegui would want. And Lopetegui, who uh, is still rather animated on the touchline. He's not the only thing to blow a fuse uh, tonight at Molyneux, but he certainly got very angry in that first 45 minutes about some of the decisions that went against him. And he will want a little bit more productivity from his team in this second half going forward. Away to our left, the ball is with Johnny, who's back at left back again. Out wide it goes via Collins to Semedo on the right this time. Then... Treore back to Semedo. Semedo actually had a really good game on Saturday against West Ham United, didn't he? Probably one of his better performances for Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's on the second half to try and influence proceedings. Johnny Otto once again. I'll go through the two lineups for you in just a second as Toti comes forward, plays it infield to Ruben Neves, and then he in turn on to Collins, who slips it down the right. Semedo being watched by Carvalho, who adds a little bit of extra zest to the. Um, Liverpool team, they've been accused of lacking a bit of intensity, but he and Elliot certainly have bought a bit of that tonight. There has been a goal in the game at the DW Stadium. Wigan Luton, Matt Jones. And it's an absolute stunner. Wigan 1, Luton 0. A max power long throw into the box isn't properly cleared. It falls to Thelo Asgard about 12 yards out, and he thumps it with a volley into the top corner. 46 minutes gone, it's Wigan 1, Luton 0. Wolverhampton Wanderers scored three minutes after half-time on Saturday. In fact, three of their last four goals have come after the break, so that could give them a little bit of encouragement as they bring the ball up towards the halfway line. They've got Jose Sarin goal, a back four now of Semedo, Collins, uh, Toti and Johnny Otto in midfield. It's uh, Matthias Nunes, Neves and Jao Martinho up front. Ryan Aitnori on the left, Traore on the right. He's been booked already and Raul Jimenez through the middle. Liverpool have Cuevan Kelleher in goal. Loads of changes from the weekend game. Milner, Gomez, Canate and Simicas. Then Keita, um, Vysicic and Thiago in midfield. Harvey Elliott, Cody Gakpo and Carvalho up front. Just in front of the centre circle, Matthias Nunes of Portugal and... Wolverhampton Wanderers has the ball, he plays it square into Toti, gets it back via Johnny Otto, then progresses forward, tries to bound past Bicetic, who dispossesses him, and then Thiago tries to nut it through to Cody Gakpo, who's fouled from behind by Toti. It's going to be a free kick just short of the halfway line. Yeah, and again, Wolves got into areas and he just felt good defending from Liverpool, but could that, that little pass, just a bit more care taken and a good press from Liverpool, they win it, but they are very compact, very organised, and You've mentioned Cuevan Kelleher. He hasn't really been tested. He's not had a, a shot to save. And uh, Wolves do need to create more. But it's just those final balls are just not not just having, you know, getting that detail and, and finding those passes. Yep. Five minutes gone in the second half. Wolves nil, Liverpool one. It's still quite a slender margin, isn't it? And Wolves, who were semi-finalists in 2019 haven't been a great FA Cup side this is only the second occasion in 20 years that they've been uh, on this would be only the second occasion in 20 years should they achieve it uh, that they've been beyond round five and Liverpool themselves haven't really got the uh, best FA Cup record under Jurgen Klopp they were holders last year uh, but uh, Certainly not a team that uh, 
regularly get to the latter stages of this competition. Both these two teams often go out in the first couple of rounds of it. And this is a third round replay with a chance to play Brighton in the fourth round. And then you never know after that, anything can happen. Free kick away to our left-hand side, taken by Eight Nori. In front of that two-tiered huge stand in front of Kelleher's uh, goal. It's squeezed in towards the six-yard box, comes out on the far side. Nune, uh, Neves tries to recycle it, bounces up, hits the defender, claims of handball. Referee says no, and it's cleared away by Carvalho, who's twirling out on the far side. The left, Simakas thinks he was fouled on the far side, goes down, free kick is eventually given. Now, the linesman who's standing right over on the far side didn't give the free kick. The referee is 25 yards ago away, does give the free kick. And now he's going down like he's been shot. I think maybe he took a little knee in the lower back. But yeah, very, very interesting, as you say, because uh, the assistance there, he's not given anything. Just looked like a fair press to me. But uh, again, that's going to relieve the pressure now for Liverpool. And looking at that handball claim, I think it's hitting his shoulder quite high up. I'm not sure what you think. No, I don't think um, Naby Keita touches that with his hand. It's certainly uh, the top of the arm, isn't it? Big hit on the top of the shoulder. Nothing more than that certainly no VAR intervention off to Forest Green Ian Danter Forest Green won Birmingham City won it only took the visitors four minutes after the restart to get level Lukas Jukovic tucking the ball away low into the bottom corner after one of three changes that John Eustace made at half time Tahith Chong won the ball in midfield and slipped in Jukovic who scored from the edge of the area Forest Green won Birmingham won and another goal of the DW for Talk Sports, Matt Jones. Yeah, suddenly a football match has broken out here. It's Wigan 1, Luton 1. Corley Woodrow with the equaliser. Uh, initial shot from him was really well saved by Ben Amos, but he could only bundle the ball back out to Woodrow, who fired the rebound home, just about crept over the line with the uh, goal line technology giving it. So 51 minutes gone and Luton a level. Wigan 1, Luton 1. Cheers, Matt. Thank you very much. Yes, back here at uh, Molyneux, we've just seen a... Um a rather interesting effort from Naby Keita. He picked the ball up, charged forward into the midpoint of the Wolves half, then shot very poorly. It was a, I, would, I would try and describe it as a daisy cutter, but it was an offence to daisy cutters. It was that bad. Yeah, an absolute worm burner, as we used to call them. <laughs> but it was, it was miles wide. And, and he had decent options, didn't he? You know, when you're driving like that, pick a better option. But from a Wolves hat, I was, uh, <laughs> oh, no, I was happy to see that. <laughs> Here's Johnny coming forward into the path of Jean Martinho out wide to the left it's uh, Ryan Aitnori trying to take on Milner who's been brilliant again tonight by the way or given away by Harvey Elliott picked up by Johnny actually I think that's probably more Canate who was guilty there as Aitnori sends a cross into the centre and uh, despite the presence of Jimenez Quilleja has to get in front of uh, the Mexican and grab it at his feet and clear it away it remains 1-0 to uh, Liverpool and then there's a back pass from Joe Gomez which Kelleher had to deal with then there's a collision between Toti and Elliot which was a bit fierce on halfway it goes out for a throw in but Liverpool don't want to give anything away to Wolverhampton Wanderers or any encouragement that if they press them high they might win the ball back do you think though uh, so you said it there James Milner he's you know how many years has Eight Nori got on Milner but Milner's been top class he's never got ran once He's used his experience, he's won the balls, he's not given free kicks away. Uh, then when Wolves did though win the ball back, only one body in the box in the middle again, wasn't yeah. it? No midfielders joining in and, and making That's been play. a problem, I think, really. When they've got the ball into a decent area, the midfielders haven't joined up, which has caused a, a lack of presence, a lack of uncertainty. Because if you've got more bodies in the box, more defenders are distracted, more errors can happen. There's a greater chance of you converting an opportunity that hasn't happened tonight for Wolves and they haven't looked threatening enough in this game. We've played 55 minutes. It's been a, a problem all season, I think. That's no secret to anybody who's followed the Premier League over the course of the campaign. They're the lowest scorers in that division for a reason. 12 Premier League goals all season is not anything that's going to trouble too many. And half of those have come since the introduction of Julian Lopetegui. So there obviously is a more productive output and the signing of Pablo Sarabia is another one of those that is trying to increase it ball loose on halfway one by Wolves given away by Eight Nori and uh, Thiago's always moving in the centre of the park wins it back plays it infield given to Elliot back to Thiago again who keeps progressing forward a little ball down the right side for Cody Gakpo but Collins had followed him out from centre half into the right wing position and tucks it away for a thrown on this near side yeah good defending from Nathan Collins there and Gakpo again he's, he, he'll be desperate for a, 
another chance. He had a couple of glimpses, didn't he, in the first half. What have you made of his overall performance, Cody Gakpo? He's a very expensive acquisition, really. I mean, 50 million quid all told. Yeah, all in all, he, you know, he says he's got in positions. He's not had loads and loads of service, but I think he works hard. He's a lovely, obviously we saw him in the World Cup. He's a lovely build, isn't he? I mean, he looks really, what is he there? He looks about 6'3", is that, is that right? He yeah. looks, looks tall, he looks lean. Um, working hard, he's disciplined, holding the shape, but again, hasn't had loads and loads of, of service. Uh, handball is the accusation as Mo Salah warms up down in front of us. Cater into Fabio Carvalho, trying to turn it around the corner away by Adama Traore. And it's cleared upfield towards the halfway line where it's collected by Liverpool centre half Joe Gomez, who rolls his studs over the ball and goes back to his goalkeeper. Mo Salah getting ready for action, primed for a, an appearance in the FA Cup once again. Uh, Ball kicked upfield. That's a poor challenge in midfield by Bajcic. And it's uh, Matthias Nunez who's on the wrong end of it. He's screaming at the referee as Fabio Carvalho travels forward with the ball down the left channel into the path of Simicas. Back to the left it goes, further into the path of Thiago. Now in the midpoint of the Wolves half is Keita. Keita up to Carvalho, into Cody Gakpo. Elliot, Liverpool building nicely here. Milner into the box. It's a deep ball towards the far post, headed away by Collins. Comes back out of the area, and then it falls to Matthias Nunes, who wins it really well. And Jimenez tries to drag them up the pitch. That's a late challenge by Thiago. That's going to be a yellow card. Uh, the, don't, the, don't join in with the crowd. You're, you're on commentary duty. No, I'm laughing with the with the cheers because <laughs> surely that was always going to be a yellow, but it was a, a cynical one from Thiago there. But what you what was the, the difference was there? Wolves were trying to stay compact, but Liverpool having the ball, but they had four red shirts still in the box. But that's the tackles maybe they talk about when when Wolves go to break and Liverpool there had just stopped it, stopped it at source, brought brought um, you know brought the Wolves player down, yellow card for sure. And, uh, but the counter-attack stop. Yeah, the Mane one. Uh, here is uh, Traore over on the right side, into the edge of the box. It comes through to Moutinho, back to Neves. Neves swings the ball out towards the left-hand side. Wolves on the attack here with eight Nori. Back to the edge of the area, collected by Johnny. Johnny across to Neves once again, who slips it further square onto Collins, who's joined the attack. The right side is Nelson Semedo. They're probing here, Wolves. Ball into the box, takes a deflection, goes down the left side of the box, and it's cleared well by Simicas, and he finds Thiago, who brilliantly and elegantly drags them further up the pitch, but Matthias Nunes is there, just snapping at the heels of Keita and others and trying to win it back. The ball's still with Liverpool, though. They go up to halfway, Eight Nori runs into the back of Elliot. I don't think Eight Nori really could have done much else there, because Elliot stopped, came back in field, and he just ran across the path of Eight Nori, and the two collided. It was a coming together more than anything else. Yeah, it was, and... Uh clever play from Elliot just just to win the he's won the free kick he's bought it there feels say eight nor will think what could I really do as you say it looks like he's even put his left leg into him but I think Elliot's had the real moment of quality with the goal but Liverpool are just pushing aren't they right, here's Fabio Carvalho into Simicast decent ball in towards the near post cleared away by Toti comes back towards Simicast from Collins as he tries to clear it goes off the Greek and goes behind and away for a goal kick. Collins trying to rev up his team. They want a little bit more from them. Mo Salah sat back down, by the way. Done his jacket back up. So maybe he isn't coming on just yet. Liverpool might be thinking of a different option. Wolves getting some encouragement from their supporters. The noise being turned up inside Molyneux. This really unique stadium, really. Four separate stands. The uh, wind, as a result, can howl through the big gaps in all four corners. But it, it's a very well-appointed stadium, and they've certainly given it a lick of paint and an upgrade over the last few years since coming back into the Premier League. Here is Toti, deep inside his own half of the field, turning away from Gakpo, and then they've spread the play to the right. Semedo has outwitted Simicast. He's run through a tight gap, funneled the ball on towards... Adama Traore, look for the return, it's a little bit too heavy from Adama Traore and then it's slipped back by Canate to Kelleher who will kick clear towards the halfway line. Cody Gakpo coming from an offside position, going to be a free kick and the referee has allowed play on for Wolverhampton Wanderers who come down the left with Moutinho into eight Nori, then Nunez sends it high into the air, chested down by the considerable chest of Adama Traore but he couldn't keep it under control and Liverpool picked it back up again in midfield. They do just need a little bit more control, Wolves, when they're on the ball, don't they? And he certainly brings it. Matthias Nunes, who takes the ball off Cater and runs forward, plays it down the left. Ain't Nori into the area. Jimenez on the half turn, gets it back to Madama Traore, who was set fair to strike that ball towards goal. 
and then spooned it into the night sky. He almost took out one of the floodlights. Yeah, it was well over and good play from Jimenez, but it all started with Mateusz Nunes and he's brought that, that energy into Wolves midfield. He's getting closer to people, winning the ball back. Uh, I think it's a really good open game. Both teams going for it, but Nunes has definitely had an impact. And I don't know, I'm trying to think of a player though. I think Nunes has done well, but apart from the Elliot Gold, I don't know who the real standout player on the pitch is. You know, I'm not thinking of anyone who you'd say, yeah, they've definitely been the, the player that's really, really, you know, ran the show. I uh, think Thiago has been brilliant in midfield. He often is. He, it, the way he moves around with the ball, you hardly notice him. He just pops it off here and there. But the most impressive thing for me today with Liverpool is it's just the just the upturn in the amount of output they're, they're putting into the game. They're playing at a faster pace. They look more intense in that first half. They haven't been as good, actually, in the second half as they were in the first. But they're coming forward now with Konate. Forward towards Thiago. Thiago trying to allow it to run across his body. Doesn't manage to poke it out. Uh, into the path of Carvalho and it's away by Semedo up to Neves he's then fouled by Thiago from behind the referee has said play on no foul they continue and that's a big bone of contention bearing in mind Thiago's been booked Simicas comes forward left footed cross into the box over the head of Saar and goes out for a goal kick now look he's blown his fuse again now Julian Lepetegui he can't quite believe that that hasn't resulted in at least a foul and maybe more. What does you think, Matt Murray? Well, there's two of them that he's let go recently. And is that the new um, directive that if it's only minimal contact, as he just towed the ball? Do you know what? You look at the replay, really good referee. And I thought that he'd caught and gone through the back just watching it, but he's got the toe on the ball. And there you go. You talk about Thiago having that experience, that brilliance, breaking things in, and that bit of experience gets a toe on it. So very good refereeing. But my initial thought was a foul but the referee's definitely got that one right in, in, now at watching the replay. Into a replay at uh, Swansea Wigan and West Brom tonight. There's been a goal at the Swansea.com stadium. Lawrence Mora. Swansea nil, Bristol City won, 63 on the clock here. Mark Sykes raced in behind to poke the ball beyond Fisher into the back of the net. A lovely through ball from Sam Bell, the substitute to set it all up. It's against the runner play. Swansea nil, Bristol City won. Julian Lepetegui not resting on his laurels, he's bringing on Matthias Cunha and Daniel Pedence, the main man for them so far this season. Thiago, brilliant again, winning the ball in midfield and then driving it forward. Slip through to Gakpo, who stayed onside, goes round the goalkeeper, hits the top of Jose Saar. Offside flag goes up anyway after the shot was taken. And it is going to be a free kick, but that was a real opportunity for Cody Gakpo to show us what he could do in front of goal. And he didn't have the poise to beat Jose Saar on that occasion. Do you think he knew he was off? But I, I still think there as well, can he hold his run or can it, you, you know, because again, you've, you've called it now, now I'm watching Thiago and that way he's starting to pull the, well, he is really pulling the strings and he's definitely offside, a good, you know, yard offside and, uh, but still maybe finish it, but good goalkeeping from Saar. Yeah, good goalkeeping from Jose Saar, but he was a yard offside. Pedence and Cunha ready for action down in front of us. Cunha just taking off a necklace. Uh, that he'd forgotten to remove. Now that's coming off and he's ready for action. And Wolverhampton Wanderers are not giving this up just yet. Remember, we will have extra time and penalties should it stay, should it be 1-1 at the end of the game or level at the end of the game. But at the moment, it's Liverpool who are surging through into round four. The holders of this uh, unique cup, the FA Cup, the oldest cup competition in the world, the one that is most talked about as being the greatest cup competition in the world because of the magic it evokes and the change is Johnny off and Pedence on or is it Cunha on one of the two but if Pedence is coming on that means Ryan Aitnori I think who goes out towards that left back position Pedence will go further forward Matinho has come off and on comes Cunha so a little bit of a rejig here and they have just vacated a little bit of uh, numerical advantage in midfield. Pedence maybe might drop it. They might go 4-4-2 here. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. But what they are are very positive. And this is a manager saying, I've got to get back into this game. I more, need more creativity on the pitch, more energy levels. And uh, so, it's, you know, it's positive. But as you say, could get, they could end up overloading midfield. Let's see how it plays out. 
but it also risk conceding that second. But I, I, I like the way that Lopetegui's looked at him for, I've got to go for this now. Yep, uh, two chances for Liverpool as well. Curtis Jones and Mo Salah coming on. So we'll go off to Forest Green and get an update from Ian Danter. Forest Green won Birmingham, won 64 minutes gone. I do not know how Forest Green are not back in front. Regan Hendry tried an acrobatic volley from the edge of the area, crashed off the angle of post and bar and broke for Matty Stevens right in front of goal. It just seemed like he just had to roll it in. And somehow Neil Etheridge, making a rare start in goal for Birmingham tonight, flung himself across his goal and managed to divert it away with his left hand. A quite extraordinary save. Matt Murray would have been proud of that. As Birmingham go in front, as I speak, from a corner that isn't properly cleared, it's stuck away into the back of the net for 2-1 to Birmingham. I think it was Christian Bielit that got the final touch. It's certainly been turned into the back of the net. Birmingham have got themselves in front. And in actual fact, it's Kevin Long on only his second start for Birmingham who's given them the lead, coming from behind. The goals as they go in on TalkSport. Forest Green 1, Birmingham 2. Actually a triple change here as we brought you that goal coming in at uh, Forest Green. And uh, Nat Phillips is on as well as the other two, Jones and Salah. And Milner has come off and Gomez has gone to right back as a result of that. So a rejig for Liverpool as well. Um, might make them a little bit more solid in the, the midfielders. Wolverhampton Wanderers threatening to vacate that area and try and get the ball out a little bit wider, I think. That's why they've got uh, Traore stuck out on the right side and Pedence out on the left-hand side here. And Gomez has gone out to right back, maybe just to give Pedence something to, to think about. He's gone in to try and interrupt Aitnori because, of course, with Aitnori and Podence on the left-hand side, that's almost a double threat, isn't it, going forward on the flanks for, for Wolverhampton Wanderers? Yeah, and, and you, you'd imagine they'll try and build a little relationship, so quite often you'll see Podence just time his movement into a little pocket and then Aitnori will want to bomb on on the outside and, and get that width, but they're, they're clever players. But you can see initially, as you say, starting with real, real width and they've tried a couple of big diags but now Pedence coming inside and trying that little movement. So they're going to keep trying that and keep trying to work it. But Pedence, he scores his goal against Villa, excellent goal against West Ham. He gives a real threat and he's, you know, Wolves haven't scored enough goals, but he has he has been one who, when he get, gets in front of goal, he, he can take his opportunities. By the way, that goal that he scored against uh, Aston Villa was an absolutely terrific, terrific goal, wasn't it? Brilliant feat. Off to the game at the Hawthorns and Jeff Peters has got news of a goal. Yeah, West Brom leading Chesterfield now by two goals to nil. Scored by Tom Rog Rogic. Defensive nightmare. Calamity uh, at the back. Error from King. And Rogic poked into the roof of the net from six yards. His second of the season. Uh, could be all over here. West Brom two, Chesterfield nil. Back here, it is Liverpool who lead by a goal to nil. And Wolves have made several changes to try and uh, bolster their attack. But it's Liverpool coming forward looking for the second and clinching goal. A game that was interrupted after just a couple of minutes because of a power cut inside uh, the stadium. It wasn't the first one that we had here tonight. We had a couple in the build-up to the game. And uh, since then, the tide turned because actually the moment that that power cut happened, Wolves were on the attack and produced a cross into the box which could have caused serious grief. And then the lights all went out, the game stopped, and then Liverpool took advantage and went in front after 13 minutes. Here is Adama Traore, down the right side, trying to poke the ball in towards the edge of the penalty area, looking for Jimenez. It goes out of play over on the far side, kept in by the touchline, actually, by Nelson Semedo, and then switched by Nunez out towards this near side. Matthias Nunez finding eight Nori. Back in field, it goes to Toti. 69 on the clock on TalkSport in the FA Cup third round replay here as uh, a night of FA Cup action continues. There's the cross from the right-hand side into the box from Semedo, aiming for Jimenez but headed away by Gomez and then easily cleared by Liverpool. No one really challenging for that and that's been a problem. Here's Tote trying to drive forward from the uh, inside of his uh, the middle part of the Liverpool half and then he loses possession to Cater and Aitnori Nori has to come back and win it back for Wolverhampton Wanderers. But that, 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 that sort of absence of threat in the centre is a real issue for Wolves, who come forward with Traore down the right side. Jimenez wants it poured back across the edge of the 18-yard box. They went towards the near post and said it was behind Cunha and easily cleared away by Canate. So again, so two really good moves for Wolves down the right. Credit Liverpool with how they defend and block the areas and, you know, the balls are coming in from, the, from that right-hand side. 
But from a Wolves point of view, as you say, the first one comes in, there's one player in the middle, Pedence on his heels. Second ball comes in low this time, again, Pedence on his heels. And they're, they're the sort of things. And why is there not a midfielder joining as well? I think they've got time to get up there and that'll be something that Lopetegui's got to look at. They've got to commit bodies forward. Here on the left-hand side is Eight Nori, trying to get in towards the edge of the area. He produces a cross. Cunha chests it down, tries to bring it under control. He travels to the edge of the six-yard box, gives it to Podence, but Canate, alert, nips in, takes the ball wide, and then clears, only as far as Neves. Bit of pressure here from Wolverhampton Wanderers, the home team, trying to get back in this game, training by goal to nil with 20 minutes to go. Live on Talk Sports. Tomorrow night, Palace, Manchester United for you. Thursday night, more Premier League football. Yes, Thursday night, Manchester City against Tottenham, live and only on Talk Sport. Friday night, we've got championship action for you. The two games happening on Friday night. We'll bring one live here on the right side. Ball played in towards the edge of the six yard box. Nunez had broken the lines that time and got into the area, but he couldn't keep the ball under control. And Liverpool look to escape. And giving the ball away rather cheaply after Curtis Jones felt he was fouled. Cunha's picked it up. He's worked it through to Jimenez. He's got it back again. He's gone past Nat Phillips. He's gone down on the edge of the D. It's going to be a yellow card for Nat Phillips. I think they were covering defenders. There's going to be no more than that. But it's going to be a free kick on the edge of the D. I think there's been another goal at West Brom. Here's Jeff Peters. It's now West Brom 3, Chesterfield 0. Jake Livermore, the scorer for the Baggies. Corner not cleared. Livermore in acres of space. Poor defending, really. And thumped home. West Brom 3, Chesterfield 0. So a free kick here for Wolves in what can only be described as Ruben Neves territory, Matt Murray. Yeah, he's got previous from this range. Seen some fantastic goals in a wall shirt. But I think Wolves have been having a a decent spell um, good play from Cunha the subs are definitely having an impact I think the chance before great ball from Neves great run from Nunes but just thinking there should he have taken a touch brought it down I think he had more time than he thought he did a bit of neither he didn't really hit it with any force didn't bring it down it was a comfortable save for Kelleher but now as you say free kick in a dangerous position surely it's only Ruben Neves going to take it and this now might be the first time to test Kelleher because all in all I think Liverpool have been really, really good at possession. They've blocked the areas, they put the bodies on the line. But he's just looking again at chances replayed and just Wolves should have more bodies in the box. But this this is a goalkeeper now. Keller's lining it up. I think he's going to go for a four-man wall, probably a charger as well. But I like Kelleher. I think he's a very, very good goalkeeper, but he's not been tested tonight. Cold, chilly night. Not too much action for Cuevin Kelleher. And he's been equal to anything that's come his way so far. Wolves nil, Liverpool one in the FA Cup. Live on Talk Sport with Carling, the UK's number one lager, 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. Mo Salah comes out and just tries to disrupt the taking of this free kick. Eight Nori is standing to its right. It's quite a good angle for a left footer, but Neves is always going to be the favourite from here. Keita is laying down behind the four-man wall as a draft excluder. And he is going to step up, right-footed, sending it towards the middle of the goal. It's narrowly over the top. He thinks that Quella has got a touch. The referee says, no, he didn't. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think he had it covered, but no. Nah, I don't know. But it wasn't enough to the corner. He'd back Ruben Neves more there. Good opportunity, but good pressing from Wolves again. Wolves have just got a bit of momentum at the moment. Liverpool have got to weather this storm. 17 minutes to go. It's 1-0 to Liverpool but Wolves are just putting the pressure on a little bit and Bicetic almost lost it to Cunha on the edge of the area goal at Swansea here's Lawrence Mora the equaliser Swansea 1 Bristol City 1 75 on the clock Ollie Cooper have been on the pitch for a matter of seconds and with his first touch at the back post he's fired it into the net Swansea 1 Bristol City 1 those watching back in the studio have said that there was a touch from Cuevin Kelleher to tip it over the top of the crossbar and it should have been a corner kick to Wolves but they haven't had the rub of the green for a couple of decisions tonight here's Thiago into the Wolves area at the other end a bit of a rare foray into the box from Joe Gomez who didn't very much look like a, a right back that doesn't get up inside the opposition box very often when he overhit the pass towards Elliot he went behind him and out for a goal kick away to our right 16 to go Joe Gomez has never scored a senior goal only 200 appearances in senior football never scored a goal okay wow I didn't know that it's great to see him country. great to see him because when he had that injury for England you really did fear for him how his career would be so it's great to see him back doing what he's doing well Thiago's going off and I think that's a problem for Liverpool because I think he's been the best player on the pitch for them so far tonight the other player going off is Bicetic 
Uh, he's going off and two changes. Fabinho is one of those. A very experienced midfield player. And uh, the other change is Ben Doak, who plays uh, up front and he will uh, come on now for uh, another appearance this season he made his uh, debut in the first team against Derby in the Carabao Cup he came through the Air United Academy his nickname is the Scottish Rooney he's only 17 years of age first appearance in the FA Cup for for him he signed for Celtic from Celtic in the summer for £600,000 and he'll come on on the left uh, hand side of the or the right hand side of the attack for the final few minutes here and he put a bit of energy and uh, purpose into the press I think going forward here is uh, Eight Nori and Doak tries to get back at him and Cunha tries to nudge the ball past Phillips and into the path of Jimenez as Wolves look to try and find another counter-attack they couldn't quite knit that one together Jones has broken it up and now it's picked up on this near side by Joe Gomez Liverpool leading by goal to nil with 15 minutes to play Fabinho back out wide towards Gomez and then back to Canate. Canate under pressure from Jimenez who's ratting around him causing him problems and uh, that goes to the he ends up on the floor there Jimenez slipping on something and the ball's cleared by Kelleher upfield Elliot trying to keep it moving in Liverpool's favour it drops for him from Jones and out to the left and Simicas. time ticking away on talk sport tomorrow morning by the way We've got uh, Laura, Ali McCoyst and Gambia on the hall back together. And this is the first of nine days of live football for you here on Talk Sport. Here's Doak in towards the near post. Toti puts it behind before it can reach Mo Salah and it goes out for a corner late on. And Liverpool aren't going to be in a rush to take this. Um, they've just had a little spell there. It's good to see Doak come on and get, get that width. And it's great seeing young lads like that and, you know, get this opportunity. And coming out there in these sort of environments, Jurgen Klopp can see what he's about. They say taking his time, aren't they? Taking his corner, they're going to run it down. Bit of gamesmanship, but Liverpool have showed that on that counter attack, they are they are dangerous, and they had a little bit more of a spell there because Fort Wolves did have a little bit of momentum. Yeah, they did have a bit of momentum. This is the third corner of the night for Liverpool when we eventually get there. <laughs> Uh, Simakas has now put the ball down inside the quadrant there are five to him out in the centre left footed goes towards the near post Nat Phillips goes up misses it oh a chance to counter attack here Podence oh what an incredible block that was from Cater because Podence tried to release Aignori over the top from that corner kick and he blocked it Cater with his whole body just went flinging himself towards it if he had escaped there Podence and got that ball out to Aignori there was a real vulnerable situation for Liverpool to deal with yeah and I'm sure the goal at the weekend was it against West Ham was a, a counter attack from from a West Ham uh, corner or a, a attack and yeah yeah the straight at the other end so yeah really really important block Ain't Nuri on the left hand side is there another goal threat coming from Wolverhampton Wanderers in this game pinged out by Neves to Adama Traore who runs in a swashbuckling fashion towards the byline produced across in towards Jimenez he's three yards from goal and he's headed it over the top well, what an opportunity that was for Raul Jimenez to get on the score sheet again. All three of his goals this season have come in cup competitions. That should have been a fourth. He was just four yards out. Joe Gomez did very well to put him under pressure. But he will feel as if he should have made more significant contact with that after what was a delicious looking cross from Adama Traore. Oh, it was amazing from Adama Traore to stand that ball in there. And the way the cross comes in and it takes out um, Canate is it and but Joe Gomez just does enough and I think that's a corner yeah he's sort of edged into the back of Jimenez but Jimenez heads it off Gomez's head yeah, and it goes over and that's why Jimenez is so disappointed but top so what a cross but what amazing defending from Joe Gomez really good but the referee and the linesman one of them should have seen that yeah I, I thought at the time I was thinking it's come off him but then I thought maybe it must have gone back onto Jimenez or whatever but definitely a corner but take nothing away Joe Gomez took it in like yeah, that brilliant. and dealing with that top top draw super defending from Joe Gomez who uh, is a bit of a quiet character really he, he hasn't got a, a, a vibrant outgoing personality he's quite a, a, a shy retiring type but he's an excellent defender and sometimes that sort of held him back a little bit here's Nunez down that right hand side looking to find Adama Traore he's putting pressure on uh, 
the defender Simakas, he's done just that, into the centre it goes, looking for Cunha, headed away by Canate, and then Podence picks it up and tries to turn, he manages to do that, he faces up the defender Cater, who's got back to try and help out his defenders, he's done brilliantly as well Cater, nabbing the ball and sending it out for a throwing down by the corner flag, it's still 1-0 to Liverpool, the Wolves are pressing, and then cater has gone down after a collision with Podence, the referee stopped the game, he's rolled back onto the pitch after making out that he was he was nudged by Podence who went off to get the ball that Cater had thrown away I mean there are dark arts and time wasting and then there's what that what Nabi Cater was doing that was outrageous yes yeah, it's, it's embarrassing and again it's gamesmanship run it down but Andre Mariner needs to take control of that but going back to some of this Liverpool defending I mean we're going to watch the replay here he, Cater's the one throwing the ball away. There's a slightest tap on his ankle, which is petulant from from Pedence, but, yeah, but it's not worth it's not worth rolling around <laughs> like that. But <laughs> the, it's pretty embarrassing. It is isn't embarrassing. It? But the defending from Liverpool though has been very very good. And you talked about winning individual battles, desire. Yeah. Jurgen Klopp will be very very happy. Oh, a lovely turn by Ignori to go beyond Joe Gomez into the centre for Cunha away by Fabinho who's dropped in to help out. Cunha trying to keep it alive. Nunez wins it. Ignori in the area down the left side pulls it through the 18 yard box. Philip into the air it's on the goal line Callahan comes out and grabs it from the sky and pulls it into his chest well they're having a spell they're having a moment but they can't force it home and that's been Wolf's story all season yeah dangerous pressing high good individual skill good crosses into the box but if any young defenders are watching this back there's some textbook stuff here you are protecting that big rectangle so sometimes you have to leave other you know leave players certain players are out wide Gomez when he tucked in there Nat Phillips getting in blocking great header I gotta be honest that was terrific intensity desire positioning from all of the Liverpool back line there they needed to make sure that they were well stationed they did exactly that and you mentioned it you know we Jurgen Klopp yesterday in the press conference was pretty open about it we were just off it we've been marginally off it all season we haven't been committing tackles not enough of them we're winning not enough challenges not enough making sure that we are the the foot on the ball when it comes into a dangerous area and tonight that has not been the case there's certainly been much better output from Jurgen Klopp's team big reaction and do you big think reaction and he said this in the press so imagine what he said behind closed doors <laughs> you know he's probably got into these and said come on then you lot out here this tonight go and show me go and show me how you can do it and give me a problem for the weekend I think it was that indication that he may well he just subtly he knows what he's doing he's very clever very subtly just let it linger that there might be a chance that if things didn't improve he would have to have a clear out yeah. and, and no one wants what a club what an amazing club. You don't want to leave this club, you know? So, yeah, fair play. And he's a top, top manager. But he obviously knows he's got the authority to say that with everything he's done and the credit he's got in the bank. But uh, it's been a brilliant game. And it's, you still feel there's going to be some more big chances in this game. There might still be one. Diego Costa is coming on to try and uh, add to the disruption and uh, problems that uh, Liverpool have had trying to defend in just a few moments we've got seven and a half minutes to go ball clipped down the right touchline by Neves and Adama Traore is chasing it he's going to keep it on the far side until Simakas comes across plays it against Adama Traore and it goes out for a throw in on the opposite side of the pitch from where we are Diego Costa about to come on for Wolverhampton Wanderers he hasn't scored in any of his last 15 club appearances before tonight and he's about to come on and try and influence proceedings here. He's going to take the place of what we don't know because the board went off. He's also had a power cut. Anything else run out of batteries? Oh, it's going to be Raul Jimenez who comes off and Diego Costa on. So a light for light change, the final change for Wolverhampton Wanderers who trail here by goal to nil to a 13 minute goal from Harvey Elliott. Don't you love it as well? There's no empty seats. Everyone's staying. Everyone's loving it. And thinking there's still some twists in this game yet. Yeah, there still could be one more turn, one more moment that changes the nature of the night. There's no point in leaving anyway before the full-time whistle goes because if Wolves were to nick a goal in the next six minutes plus added time, then we'd have another 30. Yep, yeah, yeah, very, very true. Phillips inside his own half, tries to play it forward, but he's shut down by Cunha. They've looked a lot better, haven't they, going forward since they made the substitutions for the Hampton Wanderers. They've pressed higher and uh, with more pace. They've really shut down Liverpool. And, and look, you watch a lot of football and you see how good Thiago Silva is. And um, you're just thinking, 
you know, we're, we're, sorry, Thiago. So with Thiago, though, how, how good he is and how he runs it and holds him. Since he's gone off, Liverpool have not had a control. Yeah. Well, Thiago is, is the main man. Uh, when he is on form, whatever team he's playing in is usually on form too. Here's Salah down the right side, linking with uh, Doak. Doak tries to turn under pressure. Matthias Nunes is very much behind him, but he's escaped with the ball. Doak he managed to squeeze it through to Jones, who's in the midpoint of the Wolves half. It's worked out wide towards the left. They're coming forward here, Liverpool with Simicast, who's ball into the area, it's headed away by Toti. And Matthias Nunes trying to get it back for Wolves under control. Podence, poor clearance, straight to Gomez, who sends it on to Mo Salah. Salah infield, Doek got in the way of the pass to Elliot, but still manages to keep it on towards the left-hand side where Simicas has got hold of it. And there's two balls on the pitch again now, and the referee needs to uh, get rid of that one. Simicas is going to do it for him. And then it goes back to Canato, who's deep inside his own half. He lofts the ball forward, looking for the Egyptian Mo Salah. Across comes Doak and thunders into a challenge with Aignori but the ball runs through to Jose Sarr and Wolverhampton Wanderers want to build again 85 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock on Talk Sport and uh, remember tomorrow we've got two games for you Leeds Cardiff is on Talk Sport 2 you can download our app you can flick between the two stations Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2 very easily or just ask your smart speaker to play Talk Sport 2 if you want to listen to Leeds Cardiff tomorrow night also at the same time Crystal Palace against Manchester United and there'll be loads of reaction tomorrow to Jim Radcliffe entering the formal bidding process to buy Manchester United on the breakfast show with Laura and Ali tomorrow from 6am when you wake up. Here is uh, Nathan Collins forward to Toti, 1-0 to Liverpool in the FA Cup third round replay, the right to play, Brighton in the fourth round is up for grabs here, ball dripped over the top by Nori, he was hoping that someone spun in behind it, which is a little bit too heavy for Diego Costa, who turns and glares at him and it goes through to Kelleher. Good play from Liverpool again, though. Um, had a bit of sp uh, you know a bit of spell of possession, but then they are very organised in the units. The desire has been there. I think Jurgen Klopp will look take a lot of positives from tonight, and it's things like this that can just kick you on. And but that Chelsea game's huge, isn't it? So so big. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool obviously one eye on that clash which is live on TalkSport 12.30 on Saturday here's Cunha down the left hand side trying to get into the box he's been driven wide by Cater and uh, Canate Cater did very well to just push him further out towards the left flank as Nunez takes over gets a 1-2 with Cunha goes down towards the byline produces a ball into the box which Cunha flicks on Diego Costa back to Cunha and on the volley swipes at the ball but he couldn't get any real control on the effort and it goes miles wide of the left hand upright and into the Liverpool fans over on the far side, they've brought a huge contingent with them today, Liverpool, and it looks like they're going to go home happy, a first win in four games in the offing. Yeah, Tuesday night to travel down the M6 like that, and again, it's really good play, lovely little set into Cunha, but who is there, right, making sure that he can't get a clean strike on it, you know, lovely set from Diego Costa, but Joe Gomez is right in there again, he's been excellent. Yeah, good performances all round from Liverpool tonight. I think Jurgen Klopp's going to be much happier after this game than he was on Saturday when he said he couldn't remember a poorer performance by a team that he had taken charge of in his managerial career. He was wow. absolutely furious. In his whole career, so not yeah, just Liverpool. Yeah. I, I knew, I thought he was just in a Liverpool. No, wow. he was talking about his whole career. Here is uh, Adama Traore, down the right side, moving into the box, produces a cross, it's away by Fabinho, who just dropped back into the 18-yard area, then Salah tries to escape, looks to poke it through, but it's blocked off by Wolves really well. Matthias Nunes, who's made a real impact since coming into the team, and certainly coming off the bench tonight, manages to win a free kick, and they get the ball moving once again. 88 minutes and 17 seconds of in play, the ball is on the right side, Adama Traore trying to get it through, past the defender, gets a second chance, to the, trying to get the cross in, he whizzes that through the box after getting back Back on his feet after initially going down inside the area but it was behind everyone in old gold and it's brought clear by Doak up towards the halfway line Salah Elliot it's been a really hectic intense sometimes frantic game of football brilliant cup tie and it's still finally balanced going into the final minute of the game Matt Murray as you say fantastic cup tie both teams going for it real real you know passion intensity leaving it out there the game's getting stretched now isn't it teams hunting in packs but at the moment it just looks like Liverpool are going to show that fight brilliant again great block Kate has been excellent 
since Thiago's gone off. He's had to do extra work and I think he's filled in really well on the right side of that midfield and he's charging forward now. Matthias Nunez trying to get back at him, does well. Elliot picks it up, left towards Curtis Jones. They're queuing up on the edge of the area for a cutback but Jones is aiming for the far corner and he's narrowly wide and only just millimetres away from finding it. What a great chance that was. Silky footwork down the left side into the edge of the six-yard box. He slipped it towards the far corner and it almost licked the paintwork. Yeah, really good play. And again, Cater, isn't it? Driving Liverpool on and a lovely ball then played into Jones. But goalkeeper, I think he did have it covered. But good play from Jones. OK, pump filled. Upfield by Jose Sarr into the corner. A proper avid moment. <laughs> Get it into the corner. Then put bodies forward after the throw-in is tucked away by Canate onto Matthias Nunez into the left corner, produces a cross in towards Cunha who gets down and headers the ball goalwards and Kelleher steps to his left and grabs the ball calmly. Five minutes of added time, but Wolves have had their chances and that's probably the biggest one. Yeah, more bodies in the box. Matej Nunez, he's been brilliant, hasn't he? You can see why Liverpool like him so much. His physical presence, his quality, his energy levels and he just didn't get enough purchase on it. It's a little bit wide, a little bit more pace and Keller would have been struggling in the end it's a very very comfortable save but more bodies in the box from Wolves which is good he's only played what 15 16 games for Wolverhampton Wanderers and already he's been linked with a move away to Liverpool yeah, well. uh, he's been well touted over the last few years I think Pep Guardiola said he was one of the best players in the world so that elevated his status I think when he said that it's not a bad endorsement it's is not it bad it's that that's the one you want on the bottom of your uh, book cover isn't it well now, off the ball, Pudence claims that he was knocked over. He's still on the floor as Aignori comes forward. Flivers across, in towards the near post, headed behind by Canate as K Matthias Cunha was steaming in towards the edge of the six-yard box. Jurgen Klopp is absolutely furious. He's given a yellow card, the referee, to Joe Gomez. Klopp is almost halfway down the touchline here, trying to remonstrate, and the ball is out of play. Lopetegui's not happy either on the bench in front of us quickly taken corner kick ain't nori into podence still wolves pressing for an equalizer here as we're into the first of uh, five added minutes at the end of the 90 one nil to liverpool they're going through to a game with brighton it's uh, adama traore into the center and it's cleared away by fabinho and out over on the far side pressure Wolves putting a lot of pressure in, it was a foul on Pedence, but again, when that cross came in, it was textbook defending, wasn't it? Just that line of red shirts, just blocking areas and getting first contacts on balls, and Wolves are piling on the pressure, they're leaving it all out there, but at the moment, Liverpool are showing that fight. Yeah, they haven't been perfect tonight, Liverpool, but much better, much more like Liverpool. Uh, here is uh, Ruben Neves, on the halfway line is Semedo, he's being forced back by Elliot. And Cervedo keeping it alive, tries to play it out on this left-hand side. It took a flick off Mo Salah, stopped by Mateusz Nunez. And then he flicks the ball forward. Collins has gone up front as an auxiliary centre-forward for the final few seconds of this game because Wolves know they're going out of this cup competition unless they can find a goal in the next three minutes. Ball out of play. Down on the left as Wolves look at it. Away for a throw midway inside Liverpool's half of the field. Wolves on the attack, piling the pressure on as we reach full time. Diego Costa trying to bundle his way past Canate. A ball into the box. It comes to Cunha on the edge of the area. He rolls the defender, tries to get a shot in, takes a deflection, goes behind. And it's out for a corner to Wolverhampton Wanderers. We'll just look at Thiago Silva. He's feeling the pressure. Even uh, Thiago. I keep saying Thiago Silva. Thiago down there on the bench. He's a good player as well, he, Thiago very, Silva. I like, I like him at Chelsea, yeah. But, <laughs> um, but Thiago's down there. He's arguing for throw-ins and everything. But again ball drops edge of the box but there's red shirts in the way getting the blocks in but now corner whipped in Liverpool have got most first contacts coming in but that pressure's on a big big moment Podence space on the edge of the box for Matthias Nunez oh he set it back towards Podence but he didn't get the proper weight on the pass and he invited the challenge to go straight out of play and for the first time tonight he's just messed up a little bit there Matthias Nunez yeah the first time but all in all he's been excellent but the Liverpool fans cheered that clearance as well didn't they they're willing their team over the line yeah, they've got a slither of the stand, the bottom tier of the stand over on the far side and a huge contingent away to our left as well over the corner flag. They've won a free kick over on the far side. It's going to be a Liverpool ball. And time is ticking. In fact, is it, is it a three kick or is it a throw over on the far side? They cheered that like they'd won a, uh, a penalty. They were so pleased with the fact that now they've got an opportunity to get over the line. They've only got a minute to hold on here. 
Liverpool won, Wolves nil at Molyneux tonight after a really hotly contested game between these two. Another hotly contested game between these two. The FA Cup seemingly brings the best out of meetings between Wolves and Liverpool. Wolves usually do very well in games against Liverpool in this competition, but Liverpool have got such a great record here at Molyneux. It looks like they're going to extend that. The ball drops on the edge of the Wolves penalty area. Is there one last chance? Hacked away by Cater. Love the tool in the Pettigee comes dancing down the touchline to go try and pick up the loose ball that was cleared out by Cater to get it moving again. Completely missed it. Uh, ball clipped over by Cunha, out towards the right side, Semedo juggles with it, plays it into the area, it hits the face of Simicas, comes back to Nevis, cross into the box, bounces on the edge of the area, Salah can't get it clear, was there a handball there? Referee said there was, no, he's given full time. Or has he? No. He's given the handball. Well, the Liverpool fans cheered as if it was full time, and now he's given a handball right in the middle of the Liverpool half, about 27 yards from goal and Ruben Neves has got a chance to strike on goal a free kick in the 96th minute of the game I don't even think it was handball no I'll tell you what very very if this goes in now now he's already had a sighter from the range probably should have been a corner tipped over by Kelleher everyone's going to be holding their breath Wolves players are going to be following it in Wall again's got to stand strong. You've got the draft excluder. What a moment. If this goes in, this is going to be very, very contentious. We're nearly into the 97th minute of the game. Nevers has placed the ball down. There's a four-man wall. It's almost dead centre. He's five yards outside the D. Clips it over towards the far side. Steer back into the centre towards Nathan Collins by Diego Costa. He's loose inside the box. Elliot manages to prod it away. And then the full-time whistle goes. And Liverpool can finally celebrate. And do they celebrate? Players drop to their knees in red. Harvey Elliott, who scored the winning goal, is laying on the floor inside the 18-yard box, away to our left, knowing that he has given everything. Jose Sarr is down on his haunches, knowing his team have seriously competed in this match, but knowing that he being beaten after 13 minutes might well have been the most crucial moment. Jurgen Klopp can celebrate because, boy, did they need this. They knock Wolves out of the FA Cup to keep alive the realistic hope of silverware. They rode their luck in the first game, but in the second game, they properly turned up. It was more like the Liverpool you expect, an intense performance, but they had to fight. They had to scrap to ultimately get the better of a Wolverhampton Wanderers team that have been on the up under their new boss. It's a date with Brighton in round four, and Liverpool will have to improve on their previous two meetings this season with the Seagulls if they want to get to round five. But what a game at Molyneux. Wolves nil, Liverpool won. I think we know by now that the FA Cup still means everything, certainly to fans, players, coaches. And the way those Liverpool fans opposite us are celebrating, it means the world to them, the holders of this wonderful trophy. But Matt Murray, what a magnificent game of football. What a great cup tie. Liverpool were terrific. Second half, I thought Wolves were fantastic they've got some really good players I still can't work out how they didn't get on the score sheet but managers players everybody involved fans as well they were so passionate about this cup tie desperate to win it and we enjoyed it what a great 90 minutes we've had yeah when, when you're a player or when you then or when you're watching a team you just want your players to leave it all out there and you know that both sets of players have given everything and they showed all bits and Liverpool obviously got an excellent goal but Jose Sar might look at it a little bit was he a bit high but the, the effort the endeavour as you say both sets of support are staying right to the end cheering on their teams cheering throw-ins cheering free kicks but the reason that Wolves did not get that goal was the way that Liverpool showed that what you know what their manager felt they'd been missing they reacted and, in, and when you saw the teams and you thought this you know large number of changes from both sides you're thinking how will that you know bear on the game but I'll tell you what, especially in the second half when Matej Nunes came on for Wolves, the substitutes, they were excellent, they kept pushing, the passion from the managers on the touchline. So it was a really, really good game. And as you say, it meant a lot. But both teams, you know, obviously you can see they're prioritising the league, but for tonight, they were really, really at it and really entertaining game and uh, some, you know, a few contentious decisions, but Liverpool defended so well. It was a magnificent moment right at the end of the game. Harvey Elliott's got the winning goal, but it's bad, bad goalkeeping. We'll talk about that moment right at the end. It involved Harvey Elliott. But we've got a goal at the DW Stadium. Matt Jones.